Hello, good morning, everyone. Good to have you here, Paul Tranny, Jesus Ramirez, the one and only that we're aware of. <laughs> yeah. Right? There could be <laughs> Jesus, kind of a popular name. Uh, uh, and my mm -hmm. last name is probably the most popular name if you're Latino. Oh, so. so you're like, you're like, I'm like the, the one Mike million. Jones. Yeah. Uh, you're you're like, John Smith. You're the John Smith of Latin America. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> But good to have you here, man. I'm the one and only in this room for sure. Yes, exactly. Unless, and, uh, unless Paco's middle name is Jesus and his last name is Ramirez, and I don't know. It could be. <laughs> you know how do, people do have like multiple last names. Yeah. So you never know. We do want to welcome everybody. Yeah. Good to, thank you so much that, for Howard, by the way, uh, kicking it off today. Oh, Howard the, Prinsky. What's up, man? Challenge this morning. And uh, again, day two. Thank you, Josh, for joining us. And Suyog, and of course, Tim at. Uh, and uh, yeah, Bojana and everyone, just give uh, Jesus a warm welcome. We want to welcome you here. We got a full day of Photoshop. I want to click through the schedule real fast. Let's do it. If I could. And again, that's today and tomorrow. Uh, kicking off uh, this morning was Howard with the XD Daily Creative Challenge. And uh, that's going pretty much all this week. Hey, Seuss, we have him for two hours. We made some awesome stuff yesterday. John Olson, 11 to 1. 1 p.m. is when uh, Vanessa comes on as well. So cool <laughs> having these Photoshop experts, each using it kind of in their own unique way and, uh, you know, making some awesome, uh, awesome work as well. So we also have a challenge happening too. So again, just kind of housekeeping stuff, if you will. Uh, we have a challenge, and just so you know, let's have this refreshed. Hit refresh if you need to, but nonetheless, the challenge is right here. You have chat, you have challenge, and it's all about uh, turning yourself or really any subject into a superhero. So uh, that would be pretty Ooh, awesome. Super cool. Right? Super fun. I think it will segue right over to your stuff next. But yeah, just go ahead and upload that. Uh, and it's going to be fantastic. Speaking of superheroes, superheroes, really, really into this piece here. Yeah, yeah. A little Spider-Man action. Yeah, we talked about it yesterday. Um, as as you know, um, kind of a little bit of a recap of what we talked about yesterday. We talked a lot about um, just passion projects, personal projects, things that you you want to make to showcase, and those sort of like type of things that I, I think should be included in your portfolio, much like what we were saying yesterday. Try to display the types of projects that you want to get hired to do. Mm -hmm. So I want to get hired to do composites. So that's what I what I do. Um, I want to get hired to take naps. <laughs> okay, can, I, can I do that? Let's somehow? do that. I mean, I've been doing it, trying to do it a lot. Any chance I get, yeah. somebody will hire me for well, it. Well, you guys no. have those cool sleeping pods right upstairs. So there is a cool sleeping yeah, pod here so that also it's like a, it teleports you. Oh, and I thought I had a picture of it, so I was going to show it, but I guess I don't. I, I didn't post it on my on the gram like I what thought. What is I did. that? And, and speaking of just kind of stalking you on social media, where yeah. are you on Instagram? Can you scroll? Oh yeah, up sure. Just to show Jr. Here. from PTC. Which which is, is also, which is also like all my social media handles. Yep. Also Behance, so also, you can follow me on Behance if you like. Yeah, check out his work. Yeah, that's, but that's great. Yeah, look at me, me as a zombie. Stuff. See, like uh, a clearly zombie. I like um, movies and TV shows. So a lot of my composites are cl uh, clearly related to a TV show or a movie. This is of course a composite yeah. I made uh, based off Walking Dead. Love um, it. But, but yeah, oh, and actually this is uh, a little. A nice little video of, of what you were just talking about, that Spider-Man uh, composite. You know what would be fun with this piece is, and it would be pretty easy uh, to either make him look like he's either moving forward or backward oh, very right. slowly. Like the parallax effect on it. Parallax, yeah, like yeah. You're kind of, yeah. He's coming like you're like maybe he's kind of falling and you're kind of coming after yeah. him. Yeah. That's and a good again, idea for the easy. for the next stream, maybe. There we go. Maybe uh, ideas. Maybe. Yeah. So uh, get involved, uh, yeah, make yourself a superhero, someone else a superhero, be awesome. We'll review those in about 90 minutes, and then we do a random giveaway in about 30. So that's what, what's happening today, and thank you everyone for joining us for day two, if it's your second day, so I heard it is yep. day two for Brian, awesome. Yep, and um, if you're gonna be working on a challenge, check out Adobe Stock. I used all these Adobe Stock images nice. to come up with that. So. Yeah. That's way cool. Yeah, so um, something I didn't talk about yesterday that I kind of wanted to touch on today was, again, um, more, talking more about personal projects. So after I saw the movie The Jungle Book, the newer live action movie, mm -hmm. I came home and I was like, man, that movie was great. I want to create something in Photoshop based on that just because I was so inspired by it. So what I usually do is go into Adobe Stock and just download a whole bunch of images, mm -hmm. put them together to come up 
with something like that. Mm -hmm. um, this was something I made for fun. I wasn't intending on doing anything with it. And luckily it made it into the cover of the Photoshop user magazine. Oh yeah. So that's awesome. You man. never you never know what your for fun work Very may lead. Cool. Yeah. And what's kind of interesting about that is like you're hopping on kind of like a current maybe a current trend or a popular topic yeah. of the time. Yeah. And so is the magazine. Exactly. The magazine's also right. You know, might not have a little nod to the the movie. Exactly. Uh, right. Right. And well, good job. Yeah. So that's usually what I do. I watch a movie or a show, and I'm like, oh, I want to do something like that, or like um, something that I like to do is uh, take screenshots and then try to like match the um, color gradient of a film onto a photo. Oh, okay. So it, it's um, a way of learning how to use the Photoshop tools to get that that effect. And obviously, they uh, in the movies or TV shows they don't use Photoshop. They probably use like um, After Effects or Premiere or something like that. But mm -hmm. Photoshop has those capabilities for an image, of course. Yeah. Exactly. You could get yeah. the looks. You could technically probably get the the look, the lookup yeah, table. Yeah, the lookup table. Yeah. And load that into Photoshop. Yep. And maybe you can talk about those a little later on. Remind yeah. me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Super, super fun. Yeah. So, so yeah. Just, just um, the project that we're gonna work on today is actually the cover for today's for my promo picture that you guys are using um, mm -hmm. with my photo. And then there's a composite in the background, which is this composite. Look at this. I forgot to turn off my phone. We oh talked about this God. earlier. We talked, we talked about, about it. I'm gonna get uh, fire oh, for this. Oh man! Yeah. Let me just toss this to the side. <laughs> uh, there yes. we go. Oh, Anna Brackett, go. good to have you here. Yeah. Welcome back. Want to wish everybody a. And, and you know, welcome. You know what the funny thing might be is that the person calling was probably somebody in the chat yeah. testing me. They were. They were yeah. like, "You didn't notice my comment, so I'm gonna yeah, call you exactly. on your personal yeah. your phone." Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> But anyway, um, yeah, so this is the composite that we're gonna work on today. And the reason that I chose um, to recreate this composite mm -hmm. um, was for several reasons. Um, I wanted to teach people about masking, um, creating brushes, mm -hmm. and just combining different elements that you may not think fit, yeah. uh, you know, come together as, as one piece. Okay. So I don't know if I'll, we'll have time to finish it and, and add more than what you see on here, but we're gonna give it a shot. Yeah, that sounds awesome and looks looks way cool. And that background looks like it's actually like Adobe Dimension background. Yeah, that's the stereotypical Is Adobe it, Dimension. It kind of looks like, because the you know, yeah. flat surface yeah. and you're making a coffee cup sort of thing. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Into it. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, let's get. Oh, oh my friend uh, Mario Olvera is there on the chat. He's from Guadalajara, Mexico, and some of you may recognize his work. I highly recommend you checking out his uh, Behance page. He's a really um, talented artist. Oh, And you wow. might have seen some of his work. Um, let me uh, just quickly pull it up because he does some really cool stuff. Yeah, this is him here. So this is the kind of work that he does, Mario. And the piece that you guys probably recognize is this one because Adobe used it a whole bunch on a lot of the marketing material. Oh. I'm sure you've seen this yeah. one before. Uh, I feel yeah, like so, I have. Yeah, so it was like in the, the photo of the Creative Cloud uh, homepage, like in the background oh, for a nice. while. So check them out. Mario is an excellent, excellent uh, Photoshop artist, <clears throat> excuse me, as you can see. And yeah, he's, yeah, he he's in Guadalajara, which um, I'll be there, I think, in about a month at the conference where he was yeah. a speaker at last year. Oh, where, nice. Where I spoke in uh, Creative Land, Guadalajara, Mexico. But anyway, shout it's out to uh, Mario. His work's amazing. Yep. And um, why don't we just dive right in? Let's dive Let's in. Go into Photoshop. So I have <laughs> this uh, Adobe Dimension style photo <laughs> yeah. that you um, uh, talked about, and I want to merge that onto this snowboarder to try to make it seem as as if she's popping out. And I'm also going to go into Adobe Stock and find all kinds of different overlays and snow elements. Um, create brushes and put that all together and see if we can improve on the original piece that mm -hmm. I made, which was made, you know, four or five years ago, whenever it was made. Okay. So that's nice. sort of like the theme for everything I'm doing here is trying to improve on things that I've done in the past with new knowledge and see if it comes up. Yeah, and at least and make it more all the, efficient. All this week's about sort of dusting off your portfolio. Yep. And you know, maybe you do take a second look at uh, something you did and and can you can you punch it up a little? Yep. So that's awesome. Awesome. All right, let's let's, oh, let's let's do it. You got your two images. Got my Where two images. Where do you start with this sort of thing? You're gonna cut her out. Is that the plan? Um, the plan is I'm just gonna click. Uh, if you select the move tool, you can just click and drag over it to a tab. You see how like it switches over? So I clicked and drag from within the mm -hmm. snowboarder image. You click, drag, and nothing's moving because she's locked. See, that's Photoshop telling me it's not a normal layer. You need to click on that lock icon to mm -hmm. like unlock it 
and move it around, but that's okay. I'm gonna undo that. Even if you have a lock layer, you can just click and drag the layer over onto the tab. The tab switches and you can just drop it in there. Very cool. And, and that's it. Um, I don't think I'm gonna make it into a smart object now just because I don't think I, I need the full mm -hmm. um, size of the um, snowboarder, so I'm just gonna scale her down. Plus you, uh, you need to work in context of the whole picture. Yeah, and you know, to be frank with you, I'm actually gonna make it just a little bit larger and maybe now I'll make her into a smart object, so okay. I don't need to. And if, you know, it, it'll be fine, just because I know Sweet. that um, this is gonna be like a web graphic, I'm never gonna print it, so it's okay if mm -hmm. I scale things down. So there's something you gotta keep in mind what the final output is gonna be. And for something like this, I wanna keep it small, work on it quickly, and not worry about a big, huge file. A, a <coughs> big four gig file like you talked <laughs> yeah. about yesterday, for yeah. instance. Oh, right, right, like <laughs> the Adobe Make a Masterpiece. So for those of you that don't know what we're referring to, if you go back to my Behance page, and I'm gonna keep plugging it, um, you can check out my Adobe Stock Make a Masterpiece um, project that I did for Adobe. I was one of five different artists who got hired to recreate a painting that has been lost to history. This one I think was stolen in the early 1900s, but the point is, is that it was recreated using nothing but Photoshop and Adobe Stock images, those images right there. The recreation, the one that I made is on the left, and the original is on the right. And you can see all that uh, detail that went into that project. So like I was saying yesterday, even these little ornaments are like little mini composites. So like I think this particular one was just this, it was like a marble thing that I found and I just duplicated it a whole bunch of times and placed it around and then distorted it to make mm -hmm. it seem like it was like at, at an angle. Nice. Um, same thing for the the chain on his on his uh, neck there. But yeah, this is, this is all, all made with Adobe Stock images and the reference that you were making was that this file was 4.7 gigabytes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's pretty big. Yeah, so let's let's uh, go back to this composite. So uh, now that it's this size, I'm just gonna leave that there for now. And I wanna make the actual frame. I, I wanna re uh, constrain the frame. For something like this, you could use the quick selection tool, or um, if you wanna be fancy, which some, oops, I, was in the, I, was, I didn't have the right layer selected, so then you can just click in there and it selects it. But if you wanna be fancy, you can use the uh, curvature pen tool and just click on the corners here. Oh, make sure that you have path selected, by the way. Click on the corners there of each, and you can double click just to get a straight path on the point. And then close that up. And then if you hold, uh, actually I'll duplicate the layer. And uh, I'm not gonna duplicate the layer yet. I'm gonna select it, and if you hold control, uh, which is command on the Mac and click, you create a vector mask, not a layer mask. So if mm. I were to just um, click on, on the layer mask icon, it will create a pixel base mask. Now I'm creating a vector uh, base mask, which means that I can come with the direct selection tool or even the curvature uh, pen tool as well and just delete the, or excuse me, edit uh, the yeah, vector. Yeah, I've never used a vector layer what? mask before. What? So there's certain advantages. Um, for something like this, obviously you have better edges. Um, some people think that the um, vector masks are like super sharp, which they are, as you can see, it's just a really, really sharp line. But in the properties panel, we actually, it, when you click on the vector mask, you actually have the density slider and the feather slider, so you can blur it. So see how I have a nice little blur or feather on, on the mask? And it's non-destructive. Mm -hmm. nice. And the density is sort of like, like an opacity for the mask. And what I can do now is just, um, you know, just align the line right to the edge of the frame there. Uh, Yao, uh, just so you know, uh, consider the contest or the challenge, you don't need to use any images that are provided by us or anything. Do whatever you want, just make it superhero related. Uh, awesome. So what I've done sometimes is have a, a shape layer and then I use clipping masks. Yes. That's why I've never done a vector mask. I see. It's basically well, it's, the same it's idea. Over, it's almost overkill, because you you only need to do it on one layer. Yeah. That's the thing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And um, I mean, just to show people, what you're talking about is basically using like, I don't know, like the, a rectangle shape. Mm -hmm. So select shape from the drop down, and then, you know, create the, the shape, whatever the shape may be. And then I think your method is going, holding Alt mm -hmm. and then hovering in between the two layers and yeah. clicking, and That's then it it, 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 uh, it masks it. Um, but, uh, the alternate to that is pressing Control-Alt-G, which is what I like to do, um, but you know, they both do the same thing, whatever you prefer. Oh, okay. 
Control Alt J, which is um, if you remember Control G for a group, mm -hmm. you just had the Alt key, alt key for the clipping mask. That's how I That's remember good. it at least. You're yeah. like you're already holding down one key, the Alt key, to make that layer uh, clipping mask. You yeah. might as well hold out the other two, and, <laughs> and, and you not, don't even have to touch it, click anything over there. Yeah, and I think I mentioned that yesterday. Like one of the reasons I like keyboard shortcuts a lot is um, because at home I have two monitors. So if I'm working on one monitor and my tools panel is on the other side, a tools bar is on the other side. I don't want to, or the layers panel in this case, I don't want to have to drag all the way over and then, mm -hmm. you know, do a keyboard shortcut and then drag back. You know, I can just stay here, yeah. do one quick move, and then continue working. Nice. Yep. So the superhero could be anything you want. You could make up your own or do a well known one. I like the idea of somebody making up their own. Yeah, that's, that's, that's kind of cool. awesome. So, did you ever make any superheroes when you were a kid? Ah, uh, did I make. I did like warriors and stuff. Mm. I don't know if I ever drew any superheroes. Yeah. I tried to draw my own superhero, and the only thing I can come up with was his name, and his name was Walker for some reason, <laughs> and that was it. <laughs> really? I never actually like Walker. Yeah, like, <laughs> I was just thinking of a it's name, cool, and it came out. It's kind of yeah. cool because it's that's kind of mysterious. To be fair, I was like twelve. So yeah, <laughs> no, it's not, totally awesome. Yeah, it's not like I was you know thirty-two. <laughs> Which I probably wouldn't do better at that age anyway, but it somehow makes me feel better. Um, so once we have the, the snowboarder in there, <clears throat> what we can do is duplicate this layer. And you can duplicate it by clicking and dragging uh, the layer over into a layer mask icon or just pressing Control J. They, they both do the same thing. J for jump. Is that <laughs> yeah, what you see? J for jump. And I'm going to delete the uh, vector mask because I don't need it. What I'm going to do in, in uh, for this second layer, this is going to be the layer that's going to be popping out of the frame. Um, I don't know how well it's going to work in this image, but yesterday we talked about the select Ooh, yeah, let's feature. try it. I love trying is, it. Because yeah, yesterday you talked sure. about how on a simple uh, image, like it was like a photo of me, yeah. it was super clear. But here we have snow, we have sky, uh, and, palm and it's trees, all and, and it's all clear. There's trees, no right. depth here. Right. Like, this is going to be fascinating. <clears throat> so, Let's what do you it, think? Give it a whirl. What do you I, think? I think it's going to do it. All right, let's see. Yep. Ah, look at that. I'm going to click on the layer mask icon just so you can see what it got. See, I did pretty well, huh? Pretty good. Yeah, I'll delete this right Isn't that thing. crazy? Not bad. Not this bad like, for just one click. For one click, yeah. select subject. Select subject. Just one click. Amazing. Yeah. So what we can do now is just come in and just fix the mask. I'm just going to make sure I'm on the right layer first. Mm -hmm. Um, and just come in here and select. Okay, I love hearing different ways, like the different ways people like to cut out uh, like uh, images and stuff. Josh uses uh, color channels. Oh, I see. And that's what uh, Vanessa did yeah, yesterday. Yeah, yeah. So that works really well if if you're working with um, like. Um, Oops. It might work okay here if, if she was kind of more on a, a like, like a, sky background. Yeah, exactly. Um, so let me see. Um, now that you brought it up, I have to show it. Um, so I know I have all these images in my libraries here from Adobe Stock. So I think I have some trees in here that I could show that with. Um, yeah. So like um, I think I think what we would do with this one. So what you were talking about was um, using channels, right? So like maybe you wanted to mask this tree out or give it a different uh, sky or whatever. Um, the technique that you're referring to is if you click on the channels panel, you have the different channels, right? The red, the green, and the blue, which is the channels light that make up the image. And the technique would be to click through all the different channels and see which one has the most contrast between your foreground and your background. So in this case, the blue channel has more contrast. So we hit the, the uh, tree is clearly defined and the background is basically white. So mm -hmm. what you would do is duplicate that channel. <coughs> Excuse me. And um, with a layer mask, you keep white, you remove black. So white reveals, black conceals. So we kind of want the opposite. We want to keep the tree and we want to remove the sky. So we need to invert that. So I'm going to press Control I, Command I on the Mac to invert. So we're going to keep everything that is white, but it's not completely white. You see how with the grass, uh, there's some gray and black on the grass. Um, what I'm going to do in, uh, on the bottom part, I'm just going to make a selection here and just fill it with white. My foreground color is white, so Control, uh, I'm sorry, Alt Backspace. Sorry about that. Alt Backspace, <clears throat> excuse me. And then I can make the mask, uh, the channel white, uh, brighter by going into image, adjustment, levels, and just brighten up that tree and make the background even darker. 
and then I can use this as my mask. So I can press Control, Command the Mac, and click on the thumbnail to load the selection, go back into RGB and create a layer mask, and now we remove the background, which is, I think, the technique that you were talking about. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> which that works out really, yeah. I couldn't imagine, like, you know, again, <clears throat> you just got to take a second and, like, admire the fact that it just, you, you want to see a mask cooler way, though? All that stuff. I do, cool, always. Cool, cool. So, because remember, an image is channels, right? Red, green, and blue, right? So, we know, we know what the blue channel looks like, because we, we just saw it, you saw how we created the mask. But with that knowledge, we can actually use a different technique that I think works, um, not necessarily better, it's just a different way of doing it. In some cases, it may be better. If you double click to the side of the layer, you bring up the layer style window, and then we have this option here, blend if. Blend if simply means if something is a certain shade of a particular gray, then hide it or reveal it. Where are you gonna hide it or reveal it? On the layer that you're on, this layer, or the layers below, mm -hmm. underlying layer. <clears throat> but you can also select channels. And we saw how the uh, blue channel was the channel that had the most contrast, so mm -hmm. we already know that. So what are we going to hide? We're going to hide the things that are blue. So we can click and drag this to the left and voila, it's gone. Super quick, see that? And you can hold Alt, Option on the Mac, and click to split those two in half. And that creates a smoother transition in the blues and the sky is gone super quick. And you can press OK and you have your, your uh, your transparency on the background, but in reality is not really transparency. Look at the layer thumbnail. You see the layer thumbnail? Mm -hmm. You see how there's no transparency? That's because it's using a blend, but if you actually want to create transparency, I'm going to show you a super cool pro trip that, uh, trick that like I had never seen before and I stumbled upon it randomly, um, which is if you have a blend, the blend if apply to a layer and you convert that into a smart object, watch what happens to the layer thumbnail. It now becomes oh. transparency. Oh, so nice. if you hold Control, Command, and click on the layer thumbnail, it uh -huh. actually loads as uh, loads those pixels as, as transparency. I'm gonna undo that and just show you what happens when I hold Control and click on the layer thumbnail. See how it just creates a selection around the entire canvas? Got it. That's because it's not really transparency; it's just a blend. Yeah. And if you're wondering why would you want to have real um, transparency instead of um, just a blend? Um, Remember that this layer is using luminance values to create the blend. So if you change the luminance values, then the blend uh, changes. See that? See when I change yeah. the luminance values, the blend changes. So I no longer had transparency. Nice. So yeah. if you convert this into a smart object, you get real transparency, and you can adjust the exposure mm -hmm. and keep the uh, keep the blend. And if you want to adjust the blend, you can double click on the layer thumbnail and adjust the blend from here. So. Maybe which is nice. Which is fantabulous. It's nice to seeing. It really is magical <coughs> when you start adjusting those sliders and then the, the, yeah. the sky disappears. Yeah. It's super cool. Everybody's into it. You guys liking that one? You guys like it? Let us know yeah, in the comments do. if you like it. They do. Then... Looks like they're like, wow. Oh, interesting. Oh, Tim says. OMG. In a sarcastic tone. Just kidding. <laughs> I'm just joking. <laughs> he, everybody likes it. It's like, oh, that's cool. Okay. Into it. Selections. Selections. Most of Photoshop. So yeah, this is super good. cool. Just like knocking, cutting stuff out. Cutting stuff out. All I'm right. sure for your Photoshop channel videos, that has to be one of the more popular ones. Yeah, for How sure. To cut cut, out that, that, those always, those type of videos always do uh, well in terms of views. Um, so I'll, I'll just quickly. Ooh. What? 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 Ooh, Krunal. Let's help Krunal. You see that question there? Great. Uh, doesn't have the brush size, just has uh, a visible plus sign. We talked about that yesterday, didn't Why we? Why is that? Yeah, so... Which, trust me, like, it's so annoying. Yeah, I, we talked about it. We I did. uninstalled we did. Photoshop. Like, yeah. it was Photoshop 7 before Google, because somebody said, when did you Google that when I mentioned that? I was like, like, they Google. didn't know Google. <laughs> what is Google now? It was like, it's just, it was like Alta fad. Vista or whatever. <laughs> uh, search engine was at the time. We're dating ourselves here, mm -hmm. Paul. Yeah. Um, but <laughs> uh, we have the brush tool selected, and you can see the preview, right? But if you just see, like, that plus little And you're like, where, target, like, how, where? what size is my brush? Yeah. It's so annoying. Caps lock. It's caps Press lock the caps key. lock key. See that? Caps lock key. Caps lock key. Yeah, caps lock key. And, and I, quite frankly, if you wanted both of those, you could change that in preferences. Oh, show us, Paul. Oh, right, no, so I'm I'll show it. Control K. I mean, people know. It's under it's tool, there, and where's that at? 
Yeah, I thought I saw their tools. Is it not tools? Try general. I'm, general? I'm going there now. I thought under, it was under tools. Unless it got moved. Cursors. Has to be under cursors. Yep, yes. show, uh, cursors. you're right, cursors. Show crosshair and brush, uh, and brush tip. So you can have both um, if you check mm -hmm. that option. Was that a, a default option before? I feel like it was. I don't know. I kind of feel like it was too. Yeah. But, huh. There you go. You can do it. <coughs> All right. Here's another one. Since oh, we're talking about let's, brushes, let's do it. Let's do it. Brush preview. Do you ever play with that? Brush. Oh yeah. I, don't. I'm not ready. I'm not ready I'm, for a demo. Hold I'm up. ready for a demo. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I got. I'm not going to remember the shortcut, but uh, you're going to have to give me a second to. To figure out which one. Let's see. Uh, I'm, you're gonna have to give me a second because I'm just gonna press a bunch of keys till I get it. Right. Okay. All right. But basically, you can visually get a visual representation of the size of the brush and the fall, the drop off. Um, oh man! But I don't you're think gonna I have to know give me a that one. I'm gonna. It's gonna take me a second to kind of figure this one out. <laughs> All right. So well, continue. Here, how, you continue. How about I? Uh, since we're talking about keyboard shortcuts, here's here's some. If you use the greater than and, and uh, less than keys, you can uh, cycle through the, your brushes. So notice in the panel here, I have. Well, let me show like a brush that looks completely different, so it's obvious. Um, yeah, I'll use one of these special effect brushes, and I'll paint. So I'm painting with this brush now. See that? And if I press the greater than less uh, or less than key, I switch to a different brush. See that? See how I'm just switching brushes? I'm cycling through the brushes. So that's a quick way of just cycling to oh, okay. all your brushes. Greater than or less than. And then, of course, everybody knows brackets to change the size. Bracket. I didn't know the keys. Yeah, brackets yeah. to change the size. And if you want to be fancy, you can hold Alt Option on the Mac, right click, drag left to make bigger, uh, right to make bigger, left to make smaller, up and down, adjust the hardness of the brush. See that? Cool. Yeah, that's. Okay, yeah. You're gonna get it. You're gonna, you, you, I can just keep going until we get it. <laughs> no, I don't know why. It's, it's actually not. Yeah, who knows? Not working for me. Yeah, yet. and and I don't even know what you're referring to. Is it like you can? No, see... No, it's the red. The fact that you're you were sliding up and down. Oh, is that what you were talking it's about? It's the red, but yeah, exactly. Oh, okay. That's Sorry, I, I thought it was something else. Yeah. So hold Alt, right click, and uh, <laughs> up and down, left and right, <clears throat> or Option on the Mac. No. <laughs> Yeah, you have to give no, it right click. Time. All right. All right. It's very cool, though. Yeah, uh, and like, then you can, you have the bracket keys because you do that a lot, yeah. kind of toggle between those. And you could, did you know you could adjust the hardness with the yeah, shift? Yeah, shift and bracket keys. So so instead of holding Alt and dragging um, up and down to adjust the hardness, you can hold Shift and use the bracket keys to adjust the hardness. The downside is that you can't really see the preview. You can see it up here on the top left. You can see it changing. Mm -hmm but you really can't see it as well as you can with the other view. Cool. Yeah. Very cool. So I'm just gonna do like a really quick masking job and like we talked about yesterday, I don't really worry about masks until the very, very end because I don't wanna waste time fine tuning something that I'm not gonna end up using. Oh wait, uh, control option, uh, control option drag on a Mac. Okay, uh, both, ah, okay. got it, both keys, perfect. Yeah. That's it. Got awesome. it. That was a lot of work. Um, there's a question there that says, so, if I use any tablet for retouching, I do, I have a, a Wacom uh, tablet. I think we talked about it yesterday that um, I, I got so used to the mouse and I was actually pretty late in the game with a Wacom tablet that like I only use it now for certain purposes and when I'm home, but when I travel and do demos and presentations, it's just so much easier for me to carry a mouse in my than my tablet. So I mm. just I just do it with a mouse because I'm still pretty good with it. Yeah. But um but uh, yeah like uh, at home I would use a tablet. Are you looking forward to like Photoshop on the iPad? Yeah. It's nice. uh it's pretty cool. It should be pretty cool. Pretty cool. All right so. You guys kind of uh, see what happened here. I placed this first image. I just created a, um, a vector mask that kind of, you know, defined the shape of the frame. Now I have to define what's popping out of the frame, which is why I created this rough mask that shows the skateboard jumping. Obviously that doesn't look very good. So what I can do now is just click on this uh, chain link icon so I can separate the snowboarder from the vector mask and I can move 
the snow border. See that? See how it looks like she's going in mm -hmm. and out? So I can just figure out where I want to place her. So if she's too big, like I think she is, I may have to scale her down. And the reason that she's, uh, you know, kind of stuck in that frame is because I unlinked layer one from the vector mask, which creates that illusion of her popping out. See that? Yeah, it's fun to play we with. Could, yeah, we can make a nice little animated gif with that. You know what also is fun? Are these fireworks? Yay. That means it's time for chat and win <laughs> right now. Welcome back, everyone. Good to have you here. And just say something in chat, preferably in English, and mm -hmm. we will give you a uh, sticker mule. Favorite superhero. Yeah, tell us your favorite superhero, and we'll give you... Mine is Spider-Man. What's your favorite superhero? <sighs> Mine? Yeah. Mine is Thor. Thor? All right. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. Without a doubt. Oh, yes. And then which would win in a fight? So Sticker Mule is how much again? Sorry to ask. I always ask. <laughs> <laughs> so it's always 100. 100, 100 stickers, stickers, that's right. It's, it's so unbelievable stickers. that you like, think do. your mind is playing tricks on you. I know it's like some you. crazy high number, and I'm like, Batman, are you sure people, like, about Batman, that? Iron Man, Superman, myself, 100. Darth Vader, a good one. <laughs> uh, Captain America, Black Panther, Cable. Oh, some X-Men. Oh, Gambit. And Punisher, here's Green a, Hornet. Here's pretty much a superhero right here. Lachman Sakat is there our winner. There we go. <laughs> Lockman gets 100 free stickers from Sticker Mule. We will contact you. You can go ahead and take your favorite superhero and make 100 stickers of him or her, yeah. of all of them, and uh, just just pepper the neighborhood with them. <laughs> As for everyone else, we do. Uh, you can get 10 stickers for a dollar at this Adobe Live 19 uh, URL, as you can see here. So Awesome. Were you getting lost in all the superhero names? You know what? I'm actually I'm surprised I haven't seen any uh, Captain Marvel. The movie just came out. I was expecting to see yeah. at least one. Yeah. Hey, have yeah. you actually seen uh, the trailer for Shazam? Uh, which one? The newest one? Pro yeah, the newest one, yeah. Sure. Have you? <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> I just saw it recently and I was yeah. like, this is this looks I was not supposed to like it and I yeah. I think the preview looks hilarious. I like uh Ruben's comment. What's Ruben's? Hey Suze Ramirez. <laughs> oh yeah, superhero in Photoshop. Paul Trini's my superhero. Uh no, no, no. <laughs> That's a horrible idea. America is also another good one. Yeah. Iron Man. I am Iron Man. <laughs> this would be a cool superpower. What if like anything you create in Photoshop like just comes to life, Ooh. like happens? Oh, dude, would be kind I of would fun. rule the world. Or yeah, that would be <laughs> awesome. Like you just created this frame and yeah. frame somehow it appears. <clears throat> I don't know. Just thinking of ideas. Hopefully it helps you because again, the challenge today is all about creating a superhero of yourself or someone else. That's right. This looks really looks pretty clean. I noticed you didn't have to clean up any behind her. Yeah, because it's the same. That, that, that's why I said earlier I don't want to spend a lot of time. When I was uh, masking out between uh, her legs here, I really didn't want to spend too much time masking it because I didn't really know it was going to be out of the frame, inside yeah. of the frame. So there's totally. no point on spending time on doing that. So um, that's why those little fine tuning adjustments is what I leave towards the very, very end. Yeah. And actually, um, I don't know if it's, this is going to be the best example for that, but one masking trick that I like doing just to make sure that I have a clean mask is, um, oh, I'm going to tell you an embarrassing story. So um, I got hired to do an advertising piece. This is when I was you know, barely out of college. And it was going to be printed on like 20,000 um, like flyer type things. And I did a horrible masking job on something. So there was like, uh, like pix pixels that were not so visible on screen were extremely visible oh, on the prints. Oh, were you like and, embarrassed? Oh yeah, I, I, I look really bad. <laughs> oh man. So always check your mask. And one of the ways that I like checking my mask is by double clicking to the side of the layer and just creating a um, a, a stroke wherever is, uh, I'm just gonna have to reset this. Um, yeah, reset it's there. to default. Oh, see, where is it? Yeah, kind of. Oh, there it is. I, I was couldn't see it. Too early in the morning here. Anyway, so I like creating a stroke and just, um, you know, just use a color that is visible, like red. This is not a good example because the max is actually pretty okay. Mm -hmm. But you can see like the outline of, yes. of and if I had some random if pixels somewhere else. And they're semi-transparent. Yeah, yeah. So true. Yeah. So like, um, so true. let me just like 
fake it here. Like if I had like one tiny like little pixel um, here, it would show up as red. You see that? Mm -hmm. like, and then I would know that the mask yep. is not clean. Oh, that's good. And I could just uh, just mask it out and, and then I have a clean mask. But in this case, the mask is it's not great, but I know that there's no random pixels off to the side somewhere. Yeah. And then when you're done, you can just either disable the effect or you can delete the effect. And actually, I just thought of one thing that you guys know that you can, anything that you create in a layer style, you can actually turn that into a layer. So I have a stroke here and I can just go into create layer and it creates a, a basically a layer out of that effect. So mm -hmm. pretty cool. So wait. Yeah. There we go. Um, I'm just gonna work on creating something else. And this is something that was not in the original composite and it just came to my mind, so we're gonna we're gonna try it. Um, there's, um, so you guys are probably, here I'm gonna create a new document and I'll just make it like some random size, like yeah, like 1920 by 1080 should work. Um, <clears throat> if you go into um, filter, render, in clouds, you obviously get clouds. And actually, I just thought about something else. If you yeah. go into filter, render, and clouds, but you hold Alt option in the Mac, you get uh, clouds with more contrast. That's just a random tip that I oh, thought nice. about while I, while I was um, doing that. But I don't want the more contrast, I want the regular contrast. Um, so you have clouds, obviously, right? And you probably know of um, this filter called Offset, which helps you um, basically offset the image off the canvas and tile it back on the other side. So if you wanted to create a seamless pattern, this is the technique that you would use, right? And obviously um, this image has a, a, a seam, but if you um, know how the algorithm of this particular filter works, you know that you can create um, canvas sizes that are seamless for clouds. So if you create something that's like 256, 512, um, and you know, like in that order, okay. um, you can get seamless patterns from um, clouds. So if I create a um, canvas that's 512 by 512 pixels, press OK, filter. Uh, it's up here is the first one. So whenever you apply a filter, the first one in the list will be the last filter that you use. But I'll still go into filter, render, and clouds just in case somebody missed it. There it is. And if I go into filter, other offset, notice that no matter how much I offset it, there is no seam on that, on those clouds. You might be like, okay, well that's cool, but you know, how does that's that, cool. how does that help me? I, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> um, well, I'm thinking of creating a pattern that will use this, uh, that will use a, uh, that will use the clouds. So if you're ever creating something that needs to be seamless and, and whatever that something is includes uh, the clouds filter, then you know what size to make the canvas so you don't have to deal with the with the edge. So you always mm -hmm. have a seamless pattern. So with that selected, I can just go into edit, define pattern, and I'm just gonna call this like um, fog, because I wanna make a fog layer, right? Fog, press okay. So now I have a pattern that's fog. If I come back into uh, this image, I can go into uh, the adjustment layers icon, this little half filled circle go into pattern and the last pattern that I created will show up on there. And mm. you can click and drag and you'll see that it's completely Ooh, seamless. Know. Super cool. That is cool. So you can press OK. And then uh, what I'm showing you here is how to create fog or mist from scratch without having to download like a stock plot or something like that. And you don't, you don't even have to paint it in case you don't want to use the brush tool. Because you could also do that with the brush tool and I guess I'll show you how to do that after now that I mentioned it. But um, we have uh, this pattern here and I would go into the layer mask icon and just run that filter so you can run filters on the layer mask So that you know, you can apply that effect to a mask. Ah, yeah. So you can go into filter render Clouds and it creates that effect Then I can create a group I'll drag that in there and I'll name it just so that we know what it is we'll call it fog or mist or whatever and There it is. I'll hold alt option on the Mac and click on the layer mask icon. We talked about this yesterday for a while, how you can create a layer mask that's completely black, which hides everything in that in that layer, in this case, in that group. And then with a very soft brush, hardness set to zero, and I'll make it larger, I can just come in and just paint with white to reveal the contents of that group, and it'll be that, that effect. 
And if I, cha if I change the blending mode of, of this layer into screen, you can see how it's looking mm -hmm. like, you know, like fog or mist or, you know, just something coming out of that frame, you know? Yeah. And of course, you can adjust the opacity of the layer. And if you don't like the positioning, remember, this is a seamless pattern. So I can just click in there and move it around. See that? Mm -hmm. And you'll Very never cool. see the seam. So um, if you want to know exactly what numbers to use, I actually pulled it up. Um, uh, if you go to my, I can pull it up. If you go to my uh, website, Photoshop Training Channel, and I'm going to have to Google it because I don't know exactly where I have it on my website. But if you go to a Photoshop Training Channel and you search for um, clouds, oops, sorry. Photo, I don't know the name of my website. Um, trainingchannel.com and you search for seamless clouds. I know I have a, a little article on that and I is this one here. So right here, these are the different sizes that you can use to create seamless uh, patterns. Mm -hmm. By the way, Photoshop cool. training channels where I post all my uh, YouTube videos and I also have a section that I don't really talk about too much, but people find it really interesting. It's called tip of the day. I'm a little too busy now, so I've been doing a tip of the day for a while, but for several years, I did a Photoshop tip every single day, mm -hmm. and you can check them out there too. So just little tiny, tiny tips in Photoshop if you're interested. And um, that's what that was originally, a tip of the day, but then I made it into a, a YouTube video. Nice. But anyway, so I, I also said I was gonna show you guys how to do the same thing with a brush, because some people like painting. Um, so to do the same thing with a brush, and I know I have a cloud um, image here, so I'll just search for it cloud. We'll use this one. So we have this cool looking cloud. It's a little too big, so I'll make it smaller. We'll make it probably, um, we'll keep it at a thousand pixels wide. And I'm going to just make it black and white. Um, Control Shift U desaturates an image. Control Shift U, and if you don't want to remember that, you can go into Edit. I'm sorry, Image Adjustments, and desaturate is where is desaturate? Uh, desaturate here, and the keyboard shortcuts are listed in the menus, by the way. So if you um, know where yeah, something is, you can I've look at the. I've never used desaturate. <laughs> I always go to uh, you know saturation, and then just drag it back. Yeah, yeah. So contr uh, Shift Control U, it just nice. desaturates the image. And um, we're, what I'm gonna do now is create a brush, something that we can paint with. And the thing with brushes is that it's sort of like the opposite of a layer mask in the sense that with a layer mask, anything that is white, you keep, and anything that is black, you don't keep. With a brush, when you're creating a brush, you have to think about it as ink. You know, that's the way it works in my head at least. So ink is black, so that's what we keep, and anything that's not black is not ink, so we don't keep. So in this case, I wanna keep the cloud. So I want the cloud to be black, so it's, you know, the ink, so to speak. And obviously this is white. So um, we can just press Control I, Command I on the Mac to invert. So now our cloud is dark, which we'll, we will keep. But I don't want to keep the sky. It's dark gray right now. So mm -hmm. I'll, I'll just go into Image, Adjustment, Levels, and just brighten that up like so. And then we have these super cool tools right here called Dodge and Burn that, that allow us to dodge or brighten um, or burn, which means to make darker. So I want to lighten the highlights just to make sure that everything is white and not necessarily uh, a shade of gray because I want it to be completely transparent. So that is my brush right there. And all I have to do now is go into Edit, Define Brush Preset, and that's my brush. And I can call it Cloud or Smoke or whatever, and press OK. And there it is, I can start painting with it. But um, notice how it was applied to the tool that I had selected, which is the Dodge tool. I actually want that on the brush tool, so I'm gonna have to actually select it from the list. And here it is, Clouds. And I'm going to open up a larger document just so that you can see um, how it works. And actually, I'll probably make this like 2,500 pixels. And that doesn't look like clouds at all, right? Mm -hmm. So we have this option here, uh, the brushes settings, right here next to the drop down for the where you select the brushes. And you can adjust the shape of the brush. Keep an eye out on this rectangle here. That's the preview. So anytime I adjust it, you can see how the preview changes, right? So I'm gonna change the spacing of the brush. See the difference? 
and I can start adding more effects. Um, I'll start with shape dynamics, which allows me to uh, create randomness in the size of the brush. So notice that all the brush brushes are the same size. But I can click and drag to the right, increase the size jitter, and now they no longer are the same size. I can also change the angle jitter so they all have a different angle. See that? I can also add transfer, which changes the opacity jitter, which means that they all have different opacity. See that? Super cool. Nice. I can go back into the brush tip and adjust the spacing, maybe and go into the yeah. scattering. Yeah, that's what I was. That's what I was thinking. And maybe scatter them a bit. Because you don't want it to look like a line when you're yeah, painting, right? Yeah. There we go. That's looking much better. So now I can use that on my uh, on my composite here, and I'll close some of these windows because I have way too many open. Mm -hmm. This is very very appropriate for today because it's like it's raining out here in San yeah, Francisco, yes. kind of like overcast. So <laughs> like. Which is perfect. Yeah. Yeah. So we can create a new layer, uh, select white, and then just just give it a go and see see what it looks like. You know, that oh, might be boom. too much. So you know, it just requires some fine tuning, obviously. And then you can, you know, maybe reduce the the opacity of the layer. Maybe create a layer mask and just add more. You, you know, create a layer mask and move that to clouds filter. See what that you know what that does. You know, and just keep adjusting it accordingly, and you know, see what works. So those are two ways of creating that that mist that's coming out of the um, out of the frame. So Good. which one do you like better, this one or this one? That one. Yeah, me too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, two ways of yeah. uh, of creating fogger mist. And obviously, um, for the other one, um, you could also use it to like. Um, uh, let me see. Let's see. Um, Like if there's like a, you know, maybe like a fire or something, um, you could use it to like create like, you know, like smoke, see that? Shh. But you know, you can get very creative with it and, and seeing something. I th wow, yeah, I like that. I, I'm really digging that. That's and then fun. if you um, hold the um, forward slash key, which is the same key as a question mark, you see what happens? I lock the transparent pixels. See that, see this icon here? That locks transparent pixels, so. Um, uh, forward slash, lock transparent pixels, which means that I can select like a color. I don't know, I'll just pick one of these colors found in the sky, maybe like that blue. And I can continue painting. Now I add some depth to that to that smoke. And I only paint it on that layer. See how mm -hmm. I'm not painting on the transparent pixels? So that's uh, another way of, of using that same brush that, cre that we created for one purpose to use it for something else. Yeah, do it. Cool. Very All cool. All right, let's keep going. So uh, I'll just delete that layer. We'll keep this one here. And again, we can always fine tune things at the end. What I like to do is just start throwing everything on screen and then just adjust um, at a later time. Um, what I think I'll do now is, I'll, <clears throat> I was in, I don't necessarily wanna use it for this piece, but I wanna show it anyway. Um, I like using overlays a lot. And I, I download my overlays from, of course, Adobe Stock. And um, one, one that I use, uh, so if you, let me show you what I mean when I talk about overlay. So if I go into Adobe Stock, I can type like snow overlay. And it's gonna show me all these different overlays that I can use to uh, blend with my image, right? And I'm not sh I don't think I've downloaded any one of these, but I have a similar one uh, with snow. So um, it's this one right here. Um, so I can just click and drag it over and it's got some snow, right? And I can just make it larger and we can use a blending mode. So we wanna keep the snow, snow is white, bracken is black. The blending mode that allows us to hide dark pixels and keep the bright ones is screen. And there we go, we have snow right on our image, so. Easy enough. Easy enough. I, I love that, I just love the whole idea of using a blend mode. Um, Cause it, I think some people might think, oh, how do I gotta actually remove those pixels or I gotta create a layer mask right. or something like that. You definitely don't need to. Yeah, so I awesome. I highly recommend using Adobe Stock for that because I you know I use snow overlays or rain overlay or smoke overlay. Um, see how these all these different types of overlay. This one's lightning, uh, bokeh. So all I've these. I've never you I've never searched on the term overlay. Yeah, which is so overlay. Nice. It's one that I like using. Um, another term that I like using on Adobe Stock is isolated. So if I'm looking for a shoe, okay. I'll type shoe isolated. 
and then I should get images that don't have backgrounds. Hmm. See that? Because they're isolated. Yeah, nice. So if you want something without a background, remember the term isolated. So whatever right. your keyword is, isolated. Very cool. Welcome, Devad. Just joined. I want to welcome you. Uh, just so you know, we do have this challenge going on. You can see the clock right here. About 40 minutes, we will review those challenge entries. You'll find the challenge tab, of course, next to chat. And it's all about creating a superhero. So you're up to speed. Yeah. So I, I see in the chat that somebody wrote, Smart um, Control Shift U to desaturate does not work on smart objects. That is correct. Uh, if you do have a smart object, like, um, let me see, let me just drag something in here, like that. Uh, that keyboard shortcut doesn't work. So you would do what, what you suggested, Paul, going into image adjustments, hue and saturation, saturation, and dragging it to the right, or, or left, I'm sorry, or image adjustment, black and white. Either either or works. And nice. um, see, the thing is like, when I'm when I'm demoing and I show something, like I think of 30 things that I think people will think are cool. So um, something that I think you guys would like um, right now that I show the black and white thing. And I, I think this one, this next, Thing I'm going to show. I have to credit my good friend Mark Heaps because um, I think he's the one that originally showed it. Um, I think he talked about it in a book, if I'm not mistaken. But the point is, is that this is his, his his trick. But I'm showing it to you guys, which is if you create a black and white adjustment layer, obviously it makes the image black and white. And the purpose of this adjustment layer is for you to use these sliders that control the original colors, and it tell and it it controls how dark they become. Right. So the sky is blue. So if I drag the blue slider to the left. Um, the sky gets darker, right? If I drag the blue slider to the right, the sky gets brighter. Why? Because the sky is blue. So it just uses the original colors and you can control the luminosity. But the, the trick that I want to show you guys is that if you change the blending mode, it gives you an extra level of control. So if I change the blending mode to luminosity, we keep the color, but then we can adjust the brightness of those specific colors. So now we have complete control oh, fascinating. over those colors. See That's that? cool. Yeah, so that one, uh, Mark Heaps, Mark Heaps, bringing it, bringing it, man. I like that. Yeah, yeah. And um, some of you are wondering, well, isn't that the same thing as the? I'll just, I don't need to make it into a smart object, but I will. Uh, as going into filter, um, camera raw filter, and using the HSL adjustments with luminance, which gives you basically the same thing. And the answer is very similar. Um, the difference is that uh, Camera Raw gives you more, more controls. There's no aquas in the black and white adjustment mm -hmm. layer, and there's no um, oranges, I think. Yeah, no oranges and no aquas. So you get more control here. But if you wanted to use that or something similar to that as an adjustment layer, that's the way you would do it. Yeah, I, and I like that way because you could be, you know, you'd have many layers. Yeah. So it's not realistic to use Camera Raw on all of exactly. those layers or group them into, you know. Yeah. Whatever, I yeah. just like that it does it to everything. Yep. So once again, black and white adjustment layer, change it to luminosity, and then adjust the original colors of the image by using the sliders. Super Sweet. cool. Yep. <clears throat> Into it. And by the way, talking about replays and saving these tips and tricks for later, that's awesome. We do have a replays tab. You could also watch yesterday's. Tons of good tips here. Let me show where and, that is in uh, case people don't know. If you go into um, Behance, which I thought I had open, but I don't, Behance.net, there's a live little tab here. Click on live, and there's the replays tab right under that. And then you can see not only myself, but Vanessa and everybody else who's been here for, I guess, forever, right? You guys can just keep scrolling down, and you'll see everyone uh, who is here. Uh, this is actually Claudia, who I just saw in the chat not too long ago. Yeah. Um, Howard, who also was in the, uh, in the chat earlier, at least. Mm -hmm. So people who've uh, presented are currently in the chat. Here's another one. Speaking of like resources, real fast, if yeah. we could just switch to my screen. Yep. Real fast. And no, I no, guess we go. could have done it on your screen no, as fine. well. But um, like this unassuming mm -hmm. search, yeah. which is nice. Yeah. So if you click on that, and if you do forget about like where is desaturate, what's nice about this is yes, you're searching sort of all of you know, all of Photoshop, all of Learn, all of Stock, mm -hmm. all of Lightroom photos, but you're searching within. So if I select this, it's actually applying mm -hmm. desaturate. Mm -hmm. So if you don't know where it is, you just do that quick search, and then obviously it does whatever you searched on, which is just a shortcut. Because again, Command F, that'll bring mm -hmm. that up, and you can apply it. Yeah, So super cool. And in addition to that, you can um, like type for a topic like retouching. 
and then you get all the retouching tools. And what's cool is as you roll over them, let's see, roll over like clone stamp. Clone stamp, sure. It sh does it, it highlight? It highlights it when I click on it. When so you if click I click on, on it, it okay. see, it went blue. Yeah, yeah it went highlights blue. it so you, you kind of know what happened and yeah. like where it came from, yeah. which is awesome. Yeah, super cool. Yeah. So let's continue. So in Adobe Stock, of course, I've downloaded these um, awesome, actually we'll do this side first. We'll bring that in. And what I wanna do is I kinda wanna make it seem like some snow fell off the uh, frame there. So I just have this image from Adobe Stock and I sound like a broken record, but it's like so easy to like search for stuff and save it. And that's one of the reasons why I like using Adobe Stock because all my, all my images are saved you know, within the library span, and I, and I always think, oh yeah, I used the snow, you know, image like two years ago on something, let me bring that up. And I can just bring that up for whatever I'm working with and just drag it in and, and it works. And, you know, even though I originally worked with this image on a computer that I no longer own, own it's all still synced within my Creative Cloud so I can pull it up in my laptop, which is super cool. Um, but anyway, so we have this image here and what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to um, I'll actually work on it on, on a separate document just so it's easier for me to like visualize instead of having all those layers and all those things. So that's something I usually do is um, I dragged it in there because I knew I was going to use it, but then I realized I have way too many layers. There's too much going on. Sometimes it's better to just work on it on a separate tab. When you're yeah. done with it, just bring it in. Agreed. So I'm going to work on it now just on that tab and there's no other, you know, distractions in this, in this image. So what I'm gonna do is I wanna remove this shovel and there's a lot of ways you could do it. We talked about using the clone stamp tool yesterday so you can hold Alt option in the Mac and clone something out. I mentioned the uh, keyboard shortcuts. So like I'll do it here so it's more noticeable. Um, you can actually um, rotate and scale the, the source. So I'm holding Alt shift, that's option shift in the Mac and using the less than and greater than keys to rotate the clone source. See how I'm rotating it now? See, it's so slowly but surely rotating. And the reason it's so slow is because it's a really huge document. Okay. Um, and if I, uh, I can also um, offset the clone source, so I can hold Alt, Shift, and the arrow keys to offset it. See that? See how I'm offsetting it? So you can align it perfectly to like whatever you want to clone because sometimes you're just like trying to get it, you're Agreed. not quite getting it. Yeah. So you can use that keyboard shortcut to, um, to align it. And then the other uh, keyboard shortcut is Alt, Shift, and the bracket keys to scale the source. Ah. So I can have like a nice tiny little shovel. See that? That's, yeah. Nice. And you can think of the bracket keys the same you would adjust the, the uh, brush uh, the brush size. Okay. So same idea, brush, br uh, the bracket keys to control the size. See that? So now I have a nice little, nice little shovel. And if you wanna reset it, you can go into Window, Clone Source, and you can click on this reset button and it resets the source, see that? And also, I'm pretty sure that those shortcuts only work on North American keyboards. I know that in different parts of the world, the keyboards look a little different. Okay. And I'm pretty sure that they only work with the keyboards here in, in North America. Okay. So. Yeah, clone source source panel panel I've like never used by the way. Right. Like it's like <laughs> the 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 least open <laughs> probably panel. Uh, <laughs> but when you need it, you need it. And another cool yeah. thing I didn't mention yesterday about the clone source panel is that you have five clone sources you can save. So like if I click on this corner, it saves it on, on this first. Uh, clone source and I can click on the second one and click here, nice. save that one, click here, save this one. And if I wanna go back into the shovel, I just click here and notice how the shovel is there. I wanna go back into the bricks, click on this one, the bricks are here. So you're not just stuck with one clone source because sometimes you may be working on a project that requires several different pieces and it takes mm -hmm. a lot of time to go back and resample something over and over again from multiple areas as where you can just sample them once, save them, and then use them when you need to. Yeah, that is cool. Yeah. Remember, I, this is a back in the day statement, but we probably spent a decade not even having a, 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 a seeing the source. You had to stamp, yeah. and you hoped it was correct when you're stamping over something. Because you just didn't even get a preview. We sound like those, um, I don't even know what their names are, maybe somebody in the chat does those. those the, the old people? The, yeah, old people, but like the Muppets. Remember the Muppets? Oh, the yeah, guy sitting the up in the, yeah, in, in the, the balcony just complaining? <laughs> That's how you and I sound. Do they have names? It's funny. Yes, yeah, so I'm sure somebody in the chat knows their names. I remember when, I yeah. remember we didn't get a source reference <laughs> visual. 
We used to have to walk nine just miles blind. in the snow just to use Photoshop. Yeah. <laughs> now we can just yeah. remove the use snow with yeah. the, the clone stamp tool. Yeah. So um, another way of doing it is um, by geezers. <laughs> geezers. Is that really? Yeah, their name? I don't know. But that's just a funny word. <laughs> yeah. Statler and Waldorf. Yeah. So content aware, old school content aware, not the new one. The new one is a little more complex. You can yep, you can go into. Uh, um, edit, uh, why, why am I not? Oh yeah, I, have, I need a selection. So I have a selection and I can go into edit, um, content aware fill, and now I have this window that like I could paint until Photoshop what pixels to sample from. In this case, it did a really good job, so I don't really need to change it, but assuming mm -hmm. that it had picked up some of these bricks, I can tell Photoshop not to use the bricks by painting on, you know, by subtracting. So I would subtract the bricks and Photoshop wouldn't sample from the bricks if it, if it had picked them up. But in this case, Photoshop was smart enough not to use the bricks. And I can just press OK and the shovel is gone. So now I have um, the snow that I'm going to use. And I did it in a new layer, but I only need it in one layer, so I'm gonna merge everything. So I just press Control E to merge down. Into it. So somebody said, can you still clone images from outside the window, meaning from like another, um, another, Document. Image, so yeah, not thank you. Another oh. document, so if yeah, see, see how I have my, my the bricks from the previous image, I can clone those on here. See, that? are you, are you have the see? Oh, see, so here, that's way cool though. Did you just learn that? I kind of had a feeling that you could, but I wasn't sure. Okay. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, but that's impressive, yeah, too. yeah, super like, cool. That's awesome. Yeah. Good question. So um, another thing that's super cool that a lot of people don't know, and this is old. This is from like Photoshop 7. Um, obviously, you have the um, eyedropper tool, and you can click and drag to select the color, right? But what if you want to select the color that's outside of Photoshop? Um, so like maybe you know I want to select some of the yellows on my uh, on my background here. I can click and drag from inside of Photoshop, and then drag out of Photoshop, and look, I'm still selecting the colors from outside of the window frame. So as long as you start clicking and dragging inside of Photoshop mm -hmm. and you drag out, you can select colors from outside of Photoshop. So maybe Very you're doing cool. like an online search, you find like a cool color, you don't want to like save the photo, bring it in just to sample a color, you can just have it open. Um, yeah. you know, I'll, I'll, I'll just show what I mean. Like maybe I like that purple there, you know, it's like the best purple in the world. So I can click and drag from inside of Photoshop and then just come in and drag it and select it and, and there it is. I can start painting with it. Yeah. Super cool. cool, super quick. I like that. Yeah. Uh, so speaking of cloning and stuff like that, so that you clone sources, once you identify those sources and you save them, boom, 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 you can probably, could you go to a different document and use one of those clone source that you put in the clone mm -hmm. source, mm -hmm. right? Like, so you could have one that's your uh, snow clone brush, mm -hmm. if you right. will. So, right, super good. cool. Yeah. Yeah, somebody wrote old trick. Yeah, as I said, that's been around. I started using Photoshop in Photoshop 7, and it was already available then. I don't know how far back that trick goes. Uh, which one? Uh, mm -hmm. The eyedropper tool dragging and... and yeah, so I, I don't know. Um, but yeah, so let's keep working on this. I know before before I did that, before I knew of that tip, I'd do screenshots. Yeah. And then I would open yeah. that up and then sample the color. Yeah. So hopefully that did someone good. Yep. So um, we're gonna use the same uh, trick that we talked about earlier, um, which was the channels panel, because I just want the snow, I don't necessarily want the bricks. So how can I separate the snow from the bricks? So I went into the channels panel, and I'm gonna click on all the different channels, see which one gives me the most contrast. In this case, again, it's blue channel. So I'm just going to duplicate that channel and just use levels to brighten up the snow and darken up the ground there. It doesn't need to be perfect. I can then just make a very rough selection on top because I know I want to keep all this stuff. I know all this stuff I want to keep. So I can just select it and fill it with white. Boom, there it is. And then use the burn tool to make pixels darker. I want to make the shadows darker and I'm just going to Remove all these pixels here. And again, you don't need to be perfect because the bricks are actually very similar to the color of the table. So some of those pixels are just gonna blend in seamlessly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I'm just going to control click on the on the channel thumbnail, command click, and then uh, select those pixels, go back into the layers panel, create the layer mask, and there it is, look at that, boom. Now I can come back into this document and um, I'll convert it into a smart object, why not? 
and I'll press Control T, Command T to transform. Remember that trick from yesterday? If you press Control T, Command T to transform, and you can't see your transformation handles, you can just press Control Zero, and it zooms out so that you can see the transformation handles, and then you can transform it accordingly. So I'm gonna zoom back in and see how the pixels of the bricks were so close to the color of the table that it really doesn't make a difference. And then you can just um, distort it. So I right click, select distort, and I'm gonna distort the pixels so that they kinda look like they're, you know, coming out of the frame a little bit, something like that. And then I can just um, hold Alt Option in the Mac and click on the layer mask icon. It hides all of them and I can selectively paint those pixels back in. So I can now come in here and then just, you know, fine tune the way that looks. Nice. Uh, yeah, I, David, I'm not sure if some of this is applicable if you're on CS6. David's on Photoshop CS6, which is yeah. a, a while ago, but um, yeah, um, I wish you the best. <laughs> yeah. I don't, I would say that most of the things we cover are applicable. If not, they're very close, like maybe just one small change. And I know that if you don't really know the application, it'll be um, hard to tell which, which things will work and which things wouldn't. But um, I mean, Photoshop, the photography plan is only nine bucks a month, so. Yeah. Not, not a bad deal. Mm -hmm. There we go. So we have, um, we have that snow that's just coming right out of the frame. And I know the snow looks a little soft up here. And if you wanted to fix that, all you would do is change the hardness of the brush and just come in here and, you know, yeah. sort of shape the snow. And what I like to do when I do things like this is like look at the actual contours of whatever it is that I'm trying to mask, in this case, the snow. So, you know, uh, there's like a, oops, there's like a, like a, you know, just like a snowball, shadow. yeah, shadow there. So I'm working around that and then just um, seeing how that looks. Oh, I just thought of another cool oh, trick. So, Right now, I'm like working in like really, really close detail, but I don't know how this is looking with the overall image. So what, what, how do you do it, especially if you have two monitors, if you wanna work on detail, but at the same time look at the overall image. Um, you can actually open, uh, I'm gonna close this, this window because I don't need it. You can actually open the same document in two windows and then have different zoom levels and work on one document and the other one updates at the same time. So what you can do is go into window, arrange, and at the very bottom, you'll see new window four and the names of your open documents. In this case, you only have one do open document, so it's the only option. I can select it, and now I have the same document open in two windows. What I can do now is tell Photoshop to put them side by side. So if I go into window, arrange, uh, two up horizontal, I, or vertical is what I really wanted to do, two up vertical. Now I have both documents open at the same time, so I can move into position to where I was working and then move this one here so I can see the, you know, the, the full composite. So notice how when I paint, the image that shows the full version of the composite is updating automatically. So you can work both on details and see the overall view um, without having to zoom in, zoom out, zoom and in, Especially if zoom you out. have, uh, like I, you said you had some larger monitors at home, <laughs> that's probably kind of helpful. When you have the screen real estate, to yeah. have a bigger one. Uh, Van Dam, good to see you here as well. I saw somebody, Massimiliano, we saw your design yesterday. Speaking of designs mm, yesterday, it's going to, but oh. we need to show the winner from yesterday. Oh. Yeah, we, yes. we, did, we have not done that. I left <laughs> it, it was like, every, it's like a cliffhanger. So. I will nice. say the runner up, this is the runner up and the whole idea was to create um, an album cover. Runner up goes to Ryan Doran. Nice. This is Ryan's, Ryan. Ryan did an amazing job, That's really right? really good. So cool, like just so cool. Did, did Ryan submit more than one piece? Cause I, I feel like he, the style is well, familiar. It might be a lot of people had like the same source oh, images, got it, got so they it. might have been. But again, like I, I had the same source images, and I didn't create yeah, something this cool. No, right. <laughs> right that was so really Ryan, cool. you are the man. You are the runner up. Congratulations, you're awesome. Good job, Ryan. But our winner is Josh Quintana. Congratulations, Josh Quintana, with this design Ooh, for this album love cover it. art. It's way cool. Love you've the paint won. in the background, so cool. You've won one year of Creative Cloud. Congratulations. Very cool. 
And again, like these little details right up here, like the hair kind of sticking out. Oh yeah. Right? It looks like he's behind, so playing with that depth is kind yeah. of fun. And I just love what he did here yeah. with this text. Super fantastic. Yeah. And it, I like how he blended it to the frame. Yeah, and notice how some of it's fails, but like you could still read it. Yeah. You know, the fact that yeah. you're, this is a border, no, yeah. you could still read it. Yeah. Good job. Excellent it's job. It's freaking great. Again, you can see right here, Josh Quintana, congratulations. I don't know if Josh is here with us, but we'll contact him. And uh, Ryan's certainly talented as well. So Ryan's been with us before. So anyways, Love it. you have your chance to win the Creative Cloud today as well with the challenge in the challenge tab. We'll review those in 20 minutes. But yep. this is looking good. Speaking of designs, like these little details like you're doing, like just making that kind of disappear, those hard yeah, lines little, next little, to the frame. This thing here, yep. What else would you add? What else do you need to add to this? I would Any? add, I would add more, more um, I would find more snow overlays that are sort of like, you know, just coming out of the frame like with speed, with momentum. Oh, and then okay. just add them to like, like the snowboard, like whoosh. Uh -huh. yeah. um, so I, I'm sure we can find some on Adobe Stock. Um, but yeah, just so uh, sort of to recap, the last thing that I was doing here was showing you how you can open up the same document into Windows, work on detail on one side while working on the full image on the other. I'm gonna make a drastic change just so that it's obvious. So like if I were to like erase all these pixels, you can see how mm. it automatically updates. And once again, you can go into Window, Arrange New Window 4. It'll list all your open documents. So since I only have one open, that's the only option. And then when both documents open in different tabs, I went to to up vertical to put them side by side. So arrange to up vertical. I do this a lot. Again, I have two monitors at home, so I'll, I would put one like full screen version on one side and then the work in one on the other. So I'm always looking to the side just to see how things are looking. And uh, <clears throat> excuse me, a cool Photoshop trick is, uh, you know that if you hold the space bar, you can click and drag to pan, right? Mm -hmm. But if you hold shift in the space bar, you can pan both at the same time. Nice. So. Um, could you also use the navigator window? The navigator window, like on, let me see, navigator window, like, like click and drag. Well, this one. Yeah, and you could pull, you could technically pull that out and have that as your like overall like preview right. of the whole image. Right, yeah. So like, It's just like another, yeah. you know, thought. You mean like that? Yeah, of, yeah, that's all. Cool. But that allows you obviously like, yeah. 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 Just thoughts. Yep. So many ways of doing things. Did yes. you know back in the day, <laughs> speaking of which, in Illustrator you actually worked in artwork mode and then you had to have the same, a new window of the same document open and that was your preview. Wait, and I'm sorry. What, what, this is in Illustrator. Oh, Illustrator, okay. You'd work in artwork mode, sort of just with lines, and then you'd have another window that's your preview window that you couldn't work in. Oh, wow. That's how you did things. Wow. Man, you, kids, you kids have it so good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Okay, so this is good. <laughs> now that's a good point. Like shadows under the snow. Like, yeah. You know, adding maybe some depth or you know making make it look like it's like resting there. Or... Yeah. Um, but this looks. I mean, for the amount of time that you spent on this, this is looking really good. Yeah. We haven't spent much time at all. I mean, you know, we've been talking, explaining. I've been going off into like side tips mm -hmm. and tricks that come to mind. I um, mean, reality, we could have probably done most of this in you know a short amount of time. That's um, a good question too. What was the Can question? you answer Prince Jangra is asking? I'm using dodge and, <coughs> dodge and burn on a smart object. Yeah. So the way I would do that, um, this is a, a little too big, so I'll just make it smaller. Um, so image size. I like that question, by the way. Good question. Yeah. I like good questions like that. So I'll just make it smaller so it's just faster to work with. So the question is, uh, dodge and burn in a smart object. There's really two ways you can use the dodge and burn tools, right? Directly on, the, on the, an image to make something darker or to make something brighter, right? But obviously that's destructive. So the non-destructive way of doing that is by, um, uh, let me redo that, uh, is by creating a new layer, filling it with 50% gray, shift backspace, shift delete on the Mac, brings up the fill uh, window. You can just select the 50% gray option, press OK, change the blending mode to either overlay or soft light, both will work. They'll give you a slightly different effect and you can play around to see which one works better for your image. But you can then, uh, you know, burn, uh, dodge the image to make it brighter or burn it to make it darker, right? And you can see what I did here. If I go back to normal, there it is. And then overlay, soft light. So that's dodging and burning. So the question was, how can we do that to a smart object? So if we have a smart object, 
I obviously can't use the, the burn tool on it. So you can use that same technique that I just showed with the 50% gray. But another thing that you can do if you wanna be really fancy is you can create a curves adjustment layer and then you can just, um, you know, like darken it to burn, change the blending mode to luminosity. And the reason that I'm changing the bl uh, blending mode to luminosity is because uh, with this stream extreme adjustment, you can see that the adjustment also changes the saturation of the image and you probably don't wanna do that. So once you change the blending mode to luminosity, you only affect the luminous values. But anyway, so this will be like my burn layer, mm -hmm. right? And then I can just clip that to the layer below with the layer mask icon, just press Control I, Command I on the Mac, and you can just paint with the um, brush tool to like darken certain areas. So that will be my burn uh, layer mask. I like that. So those are two ways in which you would do it. And I'm loving this. And the the great way about doing it this way is that you can adjust the it's so the nice, darkness, right? So I, it that's gives you what more I control. absolutely love. That's so so nice. And obviously the the opposite of that would be you know curves adjustment layer luminosity and then brightening it up, clip it once again. And instead of the keyboard shortcut, you could also just click on invert to invert it and then just paint with uh, white. And I'm gonna use the soft brush. So, you know, just paint with white in the areas that I want to dodge. So now I have my burn and dodge layers. S simple as that. Nice. So either use the adjustment layers or use the um, 50% and, gray option. Uh, so what Vanessa did last night, she just had a uh, just a new layer and would paint with black or white and used a different blend mm -hmm. mode. Yep. Is That's kind of how she was doing her dodge and burn. And yep. with good results. But, yeah, and, it, and the thing about awesome. it is um, everything gives you a slightly different result and one technique may look slightly better than the other. So just work with whatever works best for you. And we talked about it yesterday because um, people always ask me, what's the best technique for something I'm like I don't know like I, <laughs> I'm, I'm a fan of results not techniques mm -hmm. um, so yeah. whatever whatever looks good that's the best you yeah know? and I do have opinions on what is probably the most efficient way of doing something but it doesn't mean that it's the only way or the best way of doing something yeah yeah hopefully it's and I'm sure this stuff resonates with some people that are maybe working one way and can see the value <laughs> in, yeah you know all these different methods yep all right uh, so let's start adding yeah. some of those snow elements. Um, let me see if I have some in here. If not, I'll I'll search Adobe Stock. Yeah, I'm yeah. Gonna... I really don't have one that I like, so I'm just gonna go into Adobe Stock. So this is usually like my workflow exactly. Like I'll see if I have something already in my because I've downloaded a whole bunch of Adobe Stock images already, and if I have something, I'll use it. And if not, I'll just go into Adobe Stock, and I'll just type something like snow. I'm, I'm guessing the word oh, yeah, splash. Have to just. If I was in Colorado, I just have to go outside and, and take a, a picture. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we're in San Francisco. <laughs> like, you, you want? Yeah. So like, see, like one of these would be super cool. Actually, it looks like I already have. And this I like one. this. I like what you did here because you basically got like you know eight for a you know for yeah. one credit. Yeah. And see, like I couldn't. I thought I had it. I couldn't find it in the search, but there it is. Mm -hmm. So I guess it's, I guess it doesn't have the word snow on it. That's why it's called abstract design of white powder cloud against it's black. really cool looking. Yeah. So this, you could do so much with yeah. even this alone. Is yeah. So I'm just gonna awesome. save it to, I have an Adobe Live uh, library, so I'll just save it there. And Adobe Live, it's here, is it here? There it is, see, like it's already downloading and I can just start using it. And I guess the way that I'll do it is, since that particular image has so many elements, I can just open it up in a new tab, select the element that I wanna use and bring that in and it's still downloading, that's what that little spinny icon is. It's a really large image, it's 7,200 pixels by 6,800, so it's, it's gonna yeah. take a second here. We'll give it a second. Uh, keep in mind, we have that challenge submission deadline right below us right there. Uh, currently, we only have like one entry, so. Oh. This one person, their odds is looking really, really good really for good. winning yeah. today. Yeah. Um, but that's just for this segment. All day long, you can submit yours at any time, just to get it in before 3 p.m. Pacific time and we'll pick a winner. Maybe people are trying to get snow into their images, you know? Maybe. Maybe. I like I like what's happening with this one that I'm yeah. not gonna show just yet. <laughs> so. See, like, it's taking a little time. I'm not sure what the issue is. Let me, I should try a different one. Maybe just let it go. I don't know if it's an internet issue. But what I'll do is, um, 
Maybe I'll start with another one that Can I have you, here. You could actually, or you could go in the browser and download. And download it, it from call. the, and Good like call. maybe, I don't know if it's gonna be faster. Let's, let's try it. So um, you can save it to a library like I tried doing there and it wasn't saving fast enough, so Paul is suggesting to just simply download it onto my desktop by clicking on that on that down, uh, download button. Um, so, s since you are syncing to the Creative Cloud Library, uh, the organization that you can now do in Creative Cloud Libraries is groups. so yeah, nice. Yeah, super cool. Because mine was getting messy. <laughs> I desperately needed the different folders. Yeah. And, well, okay. now I can see what was taking so long. It says four <laughs> oh, three minutes now, but still. So, oh, now two minutes, actually going faster. So can you sh can you show that real fast? Like can you in the Creative Cloud libraries, like right over there? Yeah. So, yep. 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 And I don't know if you played with it much. Yeah. So you can click on this little icon here to create a group. Press OK, and I can start organizing my little um, my little. Uh, uh, wait, why isn't it not working? View type. You have a search up at the oh, search yep, yep, results, yep. which you, I do sir. that all the time. Thank you, sir. I, I accidentally have. Yeah. But even better, like. Um, if you create a new library up at the top, it'll say, Let's hey, do, do you it. want us to automatically organize? It. Create library. Um, I'll just call it Adobe Live. And then just put like one, one thing two. in there. Create. And then just drag And then just, I'll just drag an element. I'll just drag this element in here. Well, wait, as we wait for as we wait for anyways, the if you select any one of your yeah. other library items, it'll it'll say, hey, do you want us to automatically group mm -hmm. yeah. the vectors and the raster and this and all those elements together? So it's just nice for organization. Yeah. Um, so the problem was is that I was uh, uh, so I had view by type selected. You need to be under view by group selected. So it's okay. a very cool. important thing. Look at that one. So See? what does that say? Hold on. Ungrouped. And then, so those you have create a group or automatically, yeah. the one below that, automatically create for me. Like that one? option right there. Oh, that, See that one, line? sorry, yeah, sorry. Automatically yeah, images. group stuff together appropriately, yeah. and then you can have your right. folders and stuff. Yep, and I can just, um, yeah, create a group and save different assets. Because that's, um, that's what I do, like, my stuff just got so ugly, <laughs> I had to. I had to organize this. Yep. Oh, here we go. Our snow elements are in. They're Somebody's in. asking me what laptop I'm using. I'm using a Razer laptop, which is a gamer's laptop. And the reason I don't, I'm not a gamer, but gamer laptops have really powerful video cards. So I need that for Photoshop, for video editing, for dimension, and for all types of things. So yeah, and I wish I could tell you the model number of this Razer laptop, but I know it's the, it's like their most higher end laptop. It's this is laptop like about I don't know a week old or something. It's not this oh, wow. really new, which is why it's, it looks so pristine. It's very <laughs> it's very pretty by <laughs> yeah. the way. Like that yeah. keyboard is just gorgeous. Yeah, and it keeps changing colors too, like throughout the. You're screen. killing me. <laughs> they all light up. It's yeah. a nice soft blue shifting to a purple. Yeah, That's, this is <laughs> nice. It's a nice one. Very cool. And it's fast, which is, you know, I, I get annoyed if things are not fast. Um, but yeah, so like now I can look at all these different elements and see which one will work best for, for my snowboarder. And like, you know, there's a lot of trial and error, so I'm just gonna select this first one. I'm just gonna copy it and just paste it on here. And then I'll change the blending mode to screen and I can just transform it and see, you know, how it will best work with, um, with the composite, and if it'll work at all, maybe it won't work, you know? So I could rotate it, you know, see, you know, just coming like right under that, and you know, you can kind of figure out what the right momentum of the snow would be, just, you know, coming right out of the snow. If you don't like the, the way the snow is, is shifting, you can try doing maybe like uh, converting it to a smart object, and then going into edit, puppet warp, uh, which we talked about yesterday. You can see the, the mesh or not, I'll leave it on in this case just so I can see where I can create um, points and I can just distort it accordingly, you know, if I want to like That's really so make it seem like <laughs> it's coming out. The uh, shortcut that I showed yesterday is when you have one of those pins selected, if you hold Alt option on the Mac, you get this little icon and you can rotate, you know, so we can create like a really cool effect there like that. Shh. And again, you have to make that sound effect shh, mm -hmm. if, you, if you want it to work. <laughs> but yeah. That's super cool. Very cool. Super cool. And yeah, uh, all we need to do is just maybe select a different one. Which one do you think would be cool for this one? I like one where it looks like it's maybe darker at one and then spreads out, like maybe that one. That one? All right, cool. Well, I'll try that one. But these are fun. I can, those could, 
You can yeah, stay can all so day and play things. with these. Oops. Hopefully the weather's nice where you are. Hopefully it's not snowing, unless you like snow, then mm -hmm. I hope it is snowing for yeah. you. Uh, it's raining here in San Francisco. Which is but... somewhat surprising. I wasn't expecting it to rain. Yeah, it's, it's like such, such nice weather um, on Monday and everything. Uh, we got innovation graphics from Pakistan. What's it like in Pakistan today? Let us know. But What's the weather like in Pakistan? I have no idea. No idea. We could Google it. Um, but Less we... than five minutes for the challenge submissions. Nice. So we have this layer, and I just thought about something. Like I've been placing everything on top of my composite, but I don't have to place everything on top. Like I can place things behind her. Um, so that's the great thing about working with layers. I can just drag this one way down here, place this no layer in between the frame and uh, the, the the foreground element that's making it seem as if she's popping out, so that I can have like some this oops wrong layer. So I can have this cool like ah, keep select. Do I have oh yeah oh, auto select have... layers. I had auto select layers enabled, so that makes you select the layer that you click on. I usually don't like doing that. Mm -hmm. I like unchecking that, okay. and then okay. just having um, the layers panel, and that's where I select the layers. So I can just click and drag, you know, the that second snow, you know, effect. They're just coming out and maybe stretching it out. Um, whatever, whatever work, uh, works for you. Um, one thing that I, I showed yesterday. Um, that I, I almost always do with all my composites is I like to, depending on how big they are, so I'll show the two ways that, that I do it. If, if, if it's something small like this, I like to just take all the layers, so if I hold shift, click on the bottom layer and the top layer, it'll select them all. Um, and you can just right click and convert it to a smart object. So now I can work on it as a single image. And the reason I like doing that is because I can go into a camera raw filter and I can just adjust the image as a single image. And the reason that you see black on top is actually because we had more, um, let me undo that. Let me see, I think, I think that if I um, select everything, put it into a group, and then press Control A, Command on, on the Mac, make it into a layer mask, and then convert it into a smart object, I shouldn't see the black bars, but I don't know. Let's see if I'm right. Yeah. <laughs> okay, well, you don't see uh, the black bars, but it's transparent. <laughs> Yeah, anyway. Um, it's all good. It's all good. Anyway, so I'll zoom in. And uh, the reason I like putting everything into a smart object is because then I can adjust it as a single image. So I can increase the clarity to like, you know, create uh, contrast in the midtones, which, you know, creates that, that grungy effect if I, you know, jack it all the way up. I don't know if I want to do that, but, you know, have that option, just, just a tiny little bit. Vibrance, which is, a, which is a smart way of saturating. It protects already saturated um, pixels or skin tones if you're working with portraits. I rarely use saturation, so I leave that there. Um, and then, you know, just adjust the shadows, highlights. I do, th like, we probably don't have time for this, but like one, one thing that, at least one suggestion for this, is to make it look, have lighting from the room on mm -hmm. her. Yeah. That's a whole other, yeah. like, story. So basically, let me see if I can, we got like two minutes, right? One minute? Yeah. Let's see how fast I can do it. Um, Love it. So the way I would do that, let me see, I'm thinking of some, all right, so we'll do, we'll do it super quick. I'll just see if I can do it. Um, like maybe there's like some sunlight coming in, you know? I'll change the blending mode to like, uh, I don't know, uh, something like that. It's probably not gonna be my my best job ever, but you know. Some, some bright light coming in, and if it's hitting her, then I would make a new layer. Oops. And also change the blending mode to like, I don't know, also color dodge maybe? Just bring down the opacity, mm -hmm. so now it's hitting her. So it's not the best in the world, but in <laughs> five seconds is... I love it. Uh, so, uh, and then what about, uh, I don't know if you wanted to talk about lookup tables. Or something. Oh yeah, Thanks. good, oh man, good memory. So here, I'll save that here. And if we wanted to, oh my God, I actually don't like the way that looks so loud. You could take it off. Um, I'm like, don't listen to so. me. <laughs> but, I, but I do like, I do like lookup tables. I think they yep. tie, tie it all together. Yeah, yeah that's one thing I like, I like using to tie everything together. As you say, color lookup tables, LUTs, they're basically like these Instagram filters that you could use. Um, so you can click on one and it gives you a different effect. Wow. See that? And I can just, go through all of them, so maybe you can find one that you like. Loving, yeah, I think you touched upon 
Ooh, that's, that's, that's I'm, <laughs> I'll shut up. So I'm like, ooh, ooh. Oh, oh pick one, pick one. <laughs> I'll, I'll show you a oh, trick. Right. We got like 20 seconds. Which, and you don't, by all means, we don't have to stop on the nose. Oh, all right. We got time. Perfect. We got time. That's good. So let's just say we like this one, right? Um, the cool thing about lookup tables is not only that you can use the opacity slider to maybe just reduce the opacity, but you also have blending modes. So maybe you like the color, but you don't like the luminosity. You like your original luminosity better, then change the blending mode to color. So you keep yeah. the colors of the lookup table, but the Look original um, luminance values. Or maybe you like the new luminance values, but you don't like the color. You can just change it to luminosity and you keep the original color with the new luminance values Loving or it. normal, just keeps them both and then you can do that. Another thing- That's, that, that's looking awesome. <laughs> I love that window key, it was so good. You like the what? The I new like, window thing? I liked, yeah. I li I liked your LUT. Oh my, oh, okay. Your LUT and you my just threw it away. Here, we'll do one uh, other thing. Cause I think, I think the issue is I think that she's so bright and vibrant yeah. and then it's, it's very much like a beige, like yeah. warm tones. I like and it. this kind of starts to even it out a little bit. I don't know though, I'm also- If you- the, Check this out. If you press Control Alt, uh, if you smash your forehead up against the keyboard, you might hit Control <laughs> Shift Alt E, yeah, which merges everything in, in a layer. <laughs> so I just merged all that into one layer. And the only reason I did that, you don't, I mean, I could have done it on this um, camera raw filter, but we added the lookup table. So mm -hmm. anyway, um, one of the things that I like doing in all my composites is to make them come together more. Is I like to go into Filter, Camera Raw Filter, and this is usually like my last last step. Mm -hmm is just go into the FX panel and just add just a tiny, just a, a, a little tiny bit of grain because, you know, when you're smudging and smoothing and doing all these th things, the, the it, it just it doesn't look too real. But when you add just a little tiny bit of grain, it helps it become more like a photo. Okay. And you press okay. And actually, like, next time you guys go to the movies, look at the movie posters when they're, print, uh, when okay. they're printed, you'll see just a tiny little bit of, of film grain. That's where I got the idea. I love it. By looking at, at actual movie posters. That's what I think we noticed with the album art yesterday. Some some of them had this really, they looked pretty smooth. They added a little bit of grain, yeah. and it just, it just took it yeah. to the next level. Yeah. I really was into it. Yep. Very cool. Speaking of the contests and things like that, you can see the clock says, Zero, 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 zero. And uh, we'll dive into the submissions. And just so you know where we are, you can go over here, challenge, right in here. This is where you submit them. And then you have the gallery gallery right up here. This is all about um, creating superheroes. Oh, wow. So Some we really have cool ones. Seven of them. Let's dive into this. First one from Bruno, the overachiever got his in like super fast. And I love this reference right here as well. This is all we're asking for. This is perfect, yep. Bruno. It's like an Iron Fist type of character, super cool. I'm into it. I like that mask that he added on, on his face. It looks it <laughs> like a vector mask, like a yeah. vector shape rather. It's super cool. And there's more going on here, like the whole yeah. background and like, yeah. you know, the the sh you know shading, darker, lighter, and all that stuff. I love like the, 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 the lens flare there. thing going on behind his head, super cool. Yeah, great job. I think it's pretty sweet, huh? Yeah, I like it. Jesus approves. Yeah. Oh, Ice Gus. Oh man, we gotta view this <laughs> one in all of its glory. <laughs> Original down here. And then we have uh, the full version. Let me see who... Uh... I don't, Ice Gus. I don't know who made this, but there's Ice Gus. Ice Gus. I like that name, Ice yeah, Gus. Ice Gus. Yeah. I love it. Very like uh, sort of Narnia-esque, if you ask me. Or actually Game of Thrones, maybe. Let's dive into this one. Cecilia, Champé, Cecilia. That might be Cecilia right there. Yeah. She is Captain Photoshop. Super fun. This is what we encourage. Super cool. having a lot of fun in here. Is she like cool. a, it looks like she might be a sponsored superhero. I see a whole I bunch of- uh, I feel like a race yeah, car. Yeah. <laughs> Great job, Cecilia, super cool. Love it. You are our first, uh, I guess, Photoshop superhero we've seen. Jennifer Thompson. Um, great photo, so these, this is from one of the photos yesterday. Oh, Good job super matching, cool. matching the, the background with it and everything. It reminds me a little bit of the um, new X-Men movie poster. The Dark Phoenix a little bit. It's got that vibe going okay. on. I like I it. Could, I agree. Yeah. Like she just started this this fire behind her and she's yep. walking away and has that cool stare. Yeah, I like it. Great job, Jennifer Thompson. 
Let's go on the next one. Oh, this is great. <laughs> Ryan Benoit. Look at that Iron Man. Best Iron Man ever. <laughs> Love it. I don't, who, are these ra who, race car drivers? I don't know who some of the people I don't are. Know. But I'm into it. Like There's it. a lot of Photoshop work going on here. Like it. That was a lot of work. Great job. Very cool. Great job, Ryan Benoit. Let's go into maybe a sports superhero, Ethan, Ethan. Davis. How high do you think this guy can dunk? Oh, like how high could he get up off the yeah. ground? With those wings? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's really cool yeah, too. Like it. Really? You know what I like? Cool. I mean, I can't really tell if, if those the shadows were composited or they're part of the original photo, but it, it helps sell that effect that he's really going up high, he's really behind that wall, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? I, I just like that touch, and I don't know if it's yeah. part of the original photo or not, but either way, it looks great. Yeah, I agree. Looks really good. Ethan Davis, great job. I think we should have one more. Yeah, David Sanders. Devad. Oh, Sanders. Devad, excuse me, I'm dyslexic here. You're good. Yeah. He's like, oh, there's too much snow around me. I'm gonna <laughs> melt it all in my eyes. I love his cape though. It's awesome. <laughs> oh yeah, very cool. That's fun, I love the colors. I yeah. think this actually could be a easily a uh, uh, album art. Yeah, well, and that's like what album art. I like that only the rays coming out of his eyes have color and everything else is black and white. Yeah. It makes it super cool. And good job matching it, because I'm sure, you know, I had to take the background, marry it with the foreground. Yeah, yeah. Very cool. So cool. Yeah, everybody did a great job. Go ahead, check out each one of these. And let me just refresh one more time. Yep, those okay. are all of them. Cool. Okay. Feel free to jump in there, I appreciate those. Uh, you have a lot of Behance links, so um, I appreciate those projects. Yes, watch out for those lasers and for the lady who can start <laughs> fires with her mind and all of the Avenger-like characters as well. Super cool. Do you have a favorite in here before we move on? I really like um, Bruno's. Was that the first one? That was the first one, yeah. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I like, uh, I like Bruno's and I also like um, Jennifer. Both are super cool. Yeah, I feel like, uh, I think we could kind of tell that they were just made today. Yeah. You know, some of the others are pretty cool, but like the, okay, yeah. so this Avengers is awesome. Yeah. Probably that, wasn't made today. Right. Still super cool. And if he made it today, then that was I would so I would be disappointed if he didn't show it with, to us today, even yeah. though he didn't make it today. Right. Potentially. If he did, then correct me by all means. Yes. But I agree with you. I think this one's awesome. Great use of a photo. I think, as you know, it's like you find a good photo. Mm -hmm. That's like so much of the battle. Yeah. Yeah, you know? and and see the cool thing is he obviously went into Adobe Stock, found some images, mm -hmm. and like if you really like wanted to like make this part of his like, you know, portfolio as a personal project, he could just license the images. The watermark goes away, and he's got a really cool portfolio piece. Yeah, yeah, I would I would definitely like tighten tighten this one up, and it could totally go yeah. in his portfolio. Yeah. Any suggestions for this one to kind of? Let me tighten open it up? it up on my screen just so I could see better. Um, yeah, so I kind of showed that trick yesterday where because. The, the the highlight on his shoulder doesn't look very real. You know what I mean? It just looks yeah. like he painted on it. Yeah. And um, do, do I have like two seconds to show him? Yeah, no, by all yeah. means. We, all have, right. uh, we me, have easily me... 10, oh, perfect. 15 minutes. Yeah, so I'll so... show the same trick from yesterday. Yeah, but we'll hopefully... just switch to your screen and. Um, let me see what images. Let me see if I have a, some like a person here that I could try that same. Hey, Bruno's here. Right on, Bruno. Jennifer, yours was fantastic as well. Everybody did great. Yep. Okay, here we go. Let me see. I'll find a. Let me see. Which one would be cool to use for this? Um, I think this one would work. Um, no, actually, no. All right, I'm taking too long for this, but all right, well, this guy in a suit. Why not? <laughs> Um, <clears throat> so basically, um, the way he had it there is he had a light source that was like really close to, to his shoulder and it wasn't looking very realistic. I'm assuming that the way that he did it was by um, 
creating like a selection, you know, like around the, oh, I'll do select, select subject. Why am I using this like, oh, yeah. tool, select subject. <laughs> and, um, you know, look at that, great. So then, you know, he created, this is my guess, either created a new layer, clipped it. The point is, is that he had the shape of, of you know, like the, the, um, the shoulder. The shoulder there, yeah. And he just painted it with, you know, like a highlight color, something like that, right? Mm -hmm. And there's certainly nothing wrong with that. It's, you know, looks okay, but it doesn't look realistic, right? And you sure, you can try different blending modes and, you know, see which one looks better. Um, one of the ones that I like using for this sort of thing, as we talked about yesterday, is um, Linear Dodge Add, or you could also use um, Color Dodge. And um, this is one of those blending modes that gives you different results when you adjust opacity compared to fill. So look at this, if I, if I just bring down the opacity, notice how flat that looks. It doesn't look very realistic, right? Mm -hmm. But if I bring down the fill, now it starts looking more like there really is a light, you know, like you can actually believe now that there's maybe like a bright light hitting a shoulder, right? Because, yeah. because, um, yeah, what's happening there? Taking down the fill. <laughs> compared to opacity. So in Photoshop, we have, and I think I saved it from yesterday. Um, in Photoshop, we have eight special blending modes. Those guys right here, highlighted in yellow. Um, react differently when you adjust fill compared to opacity. I've asked Adobe engineers or Photoshop engineers why, mm -hmm. and the best answer I got is the math behind it. Okay. <laughs> so, all right. They're smarter than us. Yeah, I, yeah so. I, don't, I don't know. Yeah. So, all right, the smart it's behind. Uh, the, uh, it's yeah. almost like, you, you, it's so complex, you wouldn't like, understand, Yeah, you, you, simple, well, you simpletons you with simpletons. it. Simpletons. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You you would would like uh you know double digit IQs wouldn't understand. <laughs> um, but anyway, so um, those blending modes um, react differently when when you adjust fill compared looks to opacity. Looks so good. I mean, that just looks so good. See that? So now it's more, it looks more like and a bright he's, light. He's already there. Yeah. He already has probably that layer. Yeah. And it's just dragging that yeah. down. So and using good. the right blending mode. And also the sec the second thing you can do with those eight blending modes is if you double click on the side of the layer to bring up the layer cell window, is you can uncheck transparency shapes layer. It's, and notice how, you see how the blend changes? Mm -hmm. It just creates a much, much better transition on the edges. So it okay. looks more like a light. So see like, this could look like a really bright highlight. Also, that's a little too yellow. I'm not liking it, so I can always go into image, adjustments, hue and saturation, and just adjust the saturation. You know, see that? Mm -hmm. See now? So you can Taking really start down. playing around with um, looks so with those blending modes and make it look more like an actual highlight, not just like a painted, you know, like um, I'll, do, I'll do the select um, subject again. Not just like a paint it, I'll do it on this side now. Like, um, you know, like if we had a really bright light, cause there's a light there and to even help sell the effect more, I'll just make this light yellow. So we have like a bright yellow light there. Boom, right? So like, so that's that bright light mm -hmm. and it's hitting him. But if you just paint on the layer, you'll get that result, which doesn't look very good, right? But if you, once again, go into Linear Dodge or Color Dodge, you can try both, see which one works better. Reduce the fill instead of opacity and then uncheck Transparency Shapes Layers. Mm -hmm. You get a much, much nicer effect. Very cool. And probably in this case, you would you would probably go in and paint a highlight too. Yeah, right? yeah, just, uh, and you can start stacking this is, is basically what you're saying. Um, remember that keyboard shortcut that I showed yesterday, Control Shift D to bring back the last used selection? So okay. you don't have to go back and uh, into select subject like I went there to redo it again. If you get rid of it, um, you can always press Control Shift D to bring back the last used selection. So, yeah. And, and, and basically, cool. yeah, so I would paint like a stronger highlight or something and, you know, change the blending mode as well, which is, which is I think what you were saying, just adding like extra highlights or something. Yeah, I feel like it would just have a little bit of a halo effect, like right. a, an edge. Yeah, yeah, like a like a like rim lighting. Yeah, maybe. rim little rim light. Yeah, and maybe I would use um blend diff because I don't you know like the hair necessarily wouldn't be that bright, so maybe mm. I would just um you know hold Alt Option in the Mac and just click and drag and split those apart you know to like just make sure that the highlights are the only thing that are like completely blown yeah. out like that. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, just keep playing around with with that and see what looks good on on that particular mm -hmm. image. And I think 
like there's some other uh, other quick things since we have time. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know. If Let me switch see. to my screen or. But uh, so I'm just looking at this flame too. Somebody was, I think Anel was asking sort of like where the flame's coming from. In general, I think just even a little bit of puppet warp here mm -hmm. with that yeah. would, would help out a lot. Maybe adjust the masking, but just have that kind of go up because it looks like it's going. Yeah. So. Like the smoke is going one way and then the flame is going like this way. Right, so. right. And it's basically what I showed with um, with the snow and I'll, I'll bring it up again. I think the, the, way, the way it was described was powder. Yeah, powder. Um, so we'll just say that this is that that smoke, right? So you would select it. I'll just put it in a new document and I'll show it again um, just so you could see it. Um, I like it when we make you go fast. <laughs> Why is that? <laughs> it's just fun to watch. Just fun. Go fast, go fast. I like that. No, because that's how I work normally. I work really fast. I had to slow down a lot to become an instructor. <laughs> so. Um, so the way that you would change some like smoke or whatever, we'll just pretend that this is smoke, is by using, as you suggested, uh, puppet warp, uh, which we saw earlier. You know, you just create those pins and you can just like, um, move it around anywhere that you like. Wait, what is this? Cannot add any It's too close. I'm not trying to add oh. anything. You're just trying to grab it. Yeah. It's, 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 it's a, you're not, yeah. You're, you're not clicking on it when you grab uh, it. Yeah, I'll just zoom in. Um, puppet warp. There we go. This one's right. You select this all. Well. There we go. See that? By the way, like, so yeah, move, move move that around. Like, do some adjustment, and then hit OK. And then let's go back. Say you work on something else. Yeah. Now you want to go back and adjust that puppet warp. You double click on the puppet warp, comes back, and then boom. Oh, because you made it a smart Not object. A smart object, yeah. And that only works with a smart object. Uh, Super cool. And actually, you know what? Um, we have time, right? Like, how much time do we have? Because I want to show something that's super cool. Yeah. If it's super cool, super then cool. we got plenty of yeah. time. We're all, all right, so it's like, super cool day here <laughs> super on cool Adobe day. Live. All right, that's what I want to hear. Um, let me just close all these tabs so I don't get lost here. So, since because I saw that frame and I thought about something. Um, so this is, um, you know, we're talking about portfolio pieces and, and all that sort of stuff and a lot of, uh, one way in which you can display the pieces that you create in your portfolio is by creating mockups, right? Like, like, uh, like, um, you know, maybe maybe I created a composite and I want to show how it would look on a frame or on a cell phone or like on on, on like on a screen of a laptop if you're designing a, a website, right? Mm -hmm. So how would you create your own mockup with uh, and you know like just just save it properly so that you can keep reusing it, right? So if we wanted to use this frame to display our our, our artwork. How will we use it? And and more importantly. Um, how do we make sure that it's in, in the right perspective and save it as a template, work non-destructively? So like, you probably are familiar with the um, filter uh, vanishing point where you can create this grid, right? And in this grid, you can, you know, clone something in, in here. And I haven't sampled anything, so nothing's gonna show up. But if I were to sample something, um, it really doesn't matter what, I could, um, um, go back in there, filter, um, vanishing point, and then just, you know, clone something in. Or paste, sorry, I, I said clone, but I meant to say paste. But the, the point is, is that um, this effect is actually destructive, so you wouldn't be able to save it as a template. And what we want is to save something as a template, not just paste it there in perspective. So how do we uh, make something a template in perspective with the right perspective, the right aspect ratio, because a lot of times, uh, people would just tell you if you had a, an image, for example, like um, let me just find an image really quick. It doesn't really matter which one. We'll just um, go to my downloads and we'll just say that we want to place, I don't know, this soccer player in that frame, right? How do we do that? Um, if we just start distorting it, we're obviously going to get the, the wrong um, the wrong aspect ratio because it's a different, you know. Um, this is landscape and this thing is portrait, so if we align the corners, it's just not going to look right. You know what I mean? It's not mm. going to look right. See that? It just looks distorted, it doesn't look real. So like, how do we get something to look in the right aspect ratio? And I came up with this technique, like, I used to be a designer for uh, Motorola and we used to um, do a lot of like stuff like this. So like, I came up with this technique of, um, 
um, getting the right aspect ratio on something and then turning it into a template so you can change it easily. And uh, what you need to do is go into the perspective crop tool and you can just uh, make a grid, one of these super cool grids out of you know the, the surface that you're trying to place your item into, whether it's a cell phone screen, a billboard, a TV, laptop screen, whatever. Just hit enter and that gives you, actually I did a horrible job uh, making that, that, um, that um, crop. So let me, let me do that again. Let me just get in a little closer and I know we don't have much time, so I'm gonna go fast, but be a little more accurate. All right, so now I have my my crop there. It's a little better. So like now, that's the actual right aspect ratio of that frame, right? So with that right aspect ratio, now I can use that as my template. And the way that I would do that is by just copying those pixels. Edit, copy, merge. Then if I undo and then paste that in there, that's, that's, that's my template. I can convert that into a smart object. And all I need to do now mm. is just place it back into position. See that? So then con control T to transform, distort, mm -hmm. and I'll place it right back where it goes and it's gonna match perfectly because you know that's where it came from. See, so now I have the right aspect ratio, the right um, perspective, it's perfect. Yeah. And if I double click on it, it's a smart object. So I can place yeah. anything I want in there. So I'll place that soccer player in there, scale him up, you know, he, he looks good. I can save it, go back into my working document, and there he is, there he is perfect perspective. So this nice. is a technique that you can use to create a template um, and you can place your artwork in it and display it on your portfolio, show your clients or what have you. And the great way of doing this technique as opposed to you know that um, the vanishing point is that it's non-destructive. So I can double click on it, new client, new project, mm -hmm. and I can just drag that in there and you know, oops, I'm holding shift because, do. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> let, me, let me just escape out of that and I'll do it again. Same. Same, same, same problem, problem, right? I would do that yeah. too. Yes. All right. It's me. Uh, there she is. And it looks, you know, perspective. Yeah. It looks like she fits on there. Now, the, the last tip to this uh, point is when you save the file, I'm going to save it as, so I'll save it and I'll just call it, you know, frame or whatever I want to call it, right? So if I save it as, a, as, as my frame, when I close it and open it back up, you know, that's my template. But the problem is, is if, if I decide to like make a change, like, you know, I add layers or maybe like paint oh, over it. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, and like, you know, do something crazy and then like I just out of habit, save it and close it or maybe I merge it so that I can get back my layers. Um, when I open it again, those adjustments are of course going to be there. Um, so the way to avoid that is by using a Photoshop template file and actually all the, um, and I'll show this after actually, I'll show this first, I don't wanna confuse people. If you notice the file name has a PSD, of course, a Photoshop document. But if you simply add the letter T to it, PSDT, you create what's known as a uh, Photoshop template. And uh, what that means is that when you double click on it, it creates a new instance of that file. So look at the file name, it says untitled. So I could merge this, Control E, Command E, and if I save, Photoshop is going mm -hmm. to ask me to save this new untitled document. So even if I save it, I can't override the other one, unless of course I give it the same name. Yeah. Um, but you keep that original file intact. And if you ever want to go and edit that file, your template, all you need to do is right click and remove the T. And then you double click on frame, it comes up and there it is. Look at the, look at the file name frame.psd. So this is actually the document, not a separate instance. Uh, this was added to Photoshop in Photoshop 2015.5. Um, right around the time they started adding templates into Adobe stock. So if you're using Adobe stock, you can see, let me see, stock. Adobe.com. I think there's a section called templates. Yeah, templates. So these are the templates that you can find in Adobe Stock. And if I, you know, maybe put like a uh, car, I don't know, cat. I don't know if they have any cat templates. I guess we'll, um, we'll see. But anyway, so these are uh, the templates that you can find in, in, for, in Adobe Stock templates for Photoshop, Illustrator, and Design in Premiere Pro, which also means that if you add a T to the end of those file uh, names, Photoshop, uh, PSD, Illustrator, uh, AI, 
I what is InDesign IDD um, whatever it is. Uh, the, eh. oh, yeah, that's good. Yeah, whatever that it doesn't matter. If you add a T to the end of those file types, they'll become templates for that app as well. And that's really, really what cool. it is. Um, that's why that file type was created so we could have templates on Adobe Stock. Mm -hmm. Awesome. That's really cool. Yep. I'm so glad. Man, you, you got in like more tips uh, just under the wire and in innovation graphics, by the way, this is recorded so you can see how to do all that stuff, find all that stuff. The replay tab from yesterday for today, and we have you tomorrow. Yay. Tomorrow. So follow Jesus as well. Yeah, um, JR from PTC on Instagram and on Behance. More importantly, you're already there. Just click on that follow button. I think it's under the uh, info uh, tab. Just click on follow next to my name. And that from my so in, and from great. my uh, Behance page, I have links to my YouTube, my Instagram, and all that stuff. So if you want to learn more Photoshop tips and tricks like what I showed you there, YouTube channel is there. Fantastic. Well, thank you yep. so much, Jesus. We have John Olson up next and uh, uh, the life of AVAX, otherwise known as Vanessa, later today as well. So hang out with us all day. We really appreciate you and continue to work on those challenges. We'll be back in a couple minutes. Thanks so much, man. Awesome. See you guys. Thanks so much.